never gets old. Old. When yeah, you're from yes, I got to do a new one. When Check you're from Pennsylvania, one. Sarah, you don't pronounce L's. You realize that? When you, there's a lot going wrong in Pennsylvania with the Steelers just it's alone. It's not Wolfman movies. It's Wolfman movies. There's no L's in Pennsylvania. Makes sense. Speaking of sports, uh, I just got this as <laughs> as we were coming on. Uh, geez, just Adrian Wojnarowski just tweeted, tweeted um, Portland Trailblazers have traded Damian Lillard and Anthony Simons to the Lakers for Austin Reeves and Wenyan Gabriel and two second me, round you, picks. You want me dead, don't you? <laughs> Half of that I'd be okay with, other than going to the Lakers, but. Uh, Hooper, you are immense, sir. This is a very funny line by Hooper. Maybe Arm can get a new steering wheel wrap for his 2003 Accord. A, a furry uh, leopard print one. He, it's funny because that's such a specific observation. I think I had a an actual like right. I, I didn't even know that was a term for it. You know, when you put something around your steering wheel to make it bigger or have more yeah. of a grip, it's like a hand grip for the steering wheel. Yes. And I think in that in that Hamptons video. 17 squabble lane going to Howard's, but that was, I believe that was a steering wheel. I haven't had that car in many years, a few years since that. Literally, I think I got rid of it a month or two after that video. Mm, you miss it. It was, I had two cars for about two months. It was and that was the inside, one I wasn't do. it? No, uh, everything, <laughs> I think everything. Your guy. Filthy. Yeah, I think everything's filthy. I'm a genius. Everything's, I've, I'm not, I'm unorganized. My car is. Mm, stuttering John. I'm not, <laughs> you ever hear that the geniuses uh are unorganized which there's something to that like you're too busy cleaning and you're not thinking and you're not learning right right I mean, that's why i'm always cleaning i don't know i suppose you're <laughs> oh. <laughs> thank you hooper and i want to also thank up front i want to thank boff you're cutting in go out back in I, i'm cutting in and out I just came back in. Is that how's that? And it was such a delay for me too. Okay. Am I different? I'm not muted. How do I sound, chat, right now? Is who's who's there's such a delay with you. I don't know. You'll be back in just yeah, a second. Right. How about now? Okay, much better. Thank you. I wonder why that matters. I don't know. Let's going back continue. and coming back in. Seems to be the know. answer to everything. A Smith calls okay. it unorganized chaos. Thank you, A Smith, sir. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all that you do. I see our Gunga Din. Welcome, sir. Good to see you. Kylo Sierra Alpha. Welcome, sir. Good to see you. Uh, I want to thank Boff for uh, many, many things, especially the most recently. I mean, he contributes to gunk so many times. So many times I get something obscure it comes from. Uh, and 21 Jump Street original episodes with the music. But now the 90210 episodes that you've spun off with me as Heather, Lock Ho Heather Locklear status. Heather Hotlier. And the original music. I've gone through enough of these to know. The last one we did had five different songs playing in the background. Mm-hmm that club so yeah it's legit you got the the real deal original episodes mm -hmm. seem to i hope people uh hi lauren marie welcome welcome we never get lauren this early it's always nice to have lauren she's always on a road trip she's always on a road trip i know <laughs> i'm jealous of her mondays mimosa monday momoa momoa mimosa mondays mm -hmm. with lauren marie in uh saratoga new york or high upstate and I want to, real quick, before you continue on, I need to thank some pre-show donators. We have A. Smith, as usual. We have Ida, as usual. Thank you so much. She's not going to be with us live, so I have to thank her now. Um, and we had a, a donation I couldn't see. I think maybe it was yesterday. I don't know who it was from, but thank you for that. Was and Sue Hooper. Monster? Sue Monster, maybe? I don't know. I can't see it. I just she's, saw the amount. She's another mensch. Menchette. Menchette. And Lauren Marie goes, ha ha, my road trip's actually tomorrow. <laughs> Good call, Sarah. Good call. Uh, Rud's Ghost. Rude's Ghost. Welcome, Sarah, for me. All sexy as fuck. Oh, my God. That's A.S. Sarah R. Sarah S. How you say it? A.S.M.R. 
is your is what you're talking about your uh your Liz Cheney uh Natalie yeah, Maines. He's talking about me. That's yeah. all right. It's, it can't be me, my thumb long. <laughs> You'll see the contrast today of my Long Island loudmouth, big mouth voice versus the entertainment lawyer that talks shit about it. That mm -hmm. crazy gossip. This uh, is gonna crazy. be a big a a big um fair use episode. Yeah, he, big time. You gonna read the fair use uh, rap? No, I don't have to. I'm just gonna state before it starts that this is fair use, and we are gonna practice good fair use while this show continues on. One thing, uh, Lauren's road trip. She's talking about. It is crazy now when you think about modern day and the options you can bring with you on a road trip, audio wise, versus say 1995. Mm-hmm. I mean, th there's no you could you could you could download a podcast while you're driving and listen to it. It's crazy. There's almost no topic you can't take on. There's almost no it, you, I, I actually enjoy road trips because of that. It just gives you an, uh, an excuse to load up on whatever you haven't listened to. And there's no better place to listen to that than a car. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm always still afraid, though, because I'm old that the using like a. Um... Uh, MP3s are going to run my battery down somehow, and it's just going to fuck my car up because I'm not used to this technology. So I'm afraid I go to start my car when I'm 500 miles away from home and my battery's dead. I'm I'm paranoid. Well, the good news is uh, there's so many ways to save your ass now from AAA to phones to God knows what. You're never really lost. I don't know how we survived getting getting stuck on the side of a road in the 90s and the 80s compared to today. You're never stuck. Think about what you people had to go through. I mean, I remember when I first got my license getting stuck a few times in the 90s, in the early 90s, like literally running three miles to a gas station mm -hmm. to a pay phone. I and, think I have like six more months of free roadside service. So after that, I'm going to be scared to death. Thank you, Gunga Den. 21 Jump Street Watch Along is really good. Th thank you, Gunga Den. Um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 not to brag, nobody knows more about that show than I, including the people that who work on it. That is true. And it's only going to get worse. And I'm jealous of Sarah's 90210. And yeah, you get a lot of, uh, you get a lot of our, um, our super broads agreeing with you on not It's a very big, like Katie Aldon, obviously, Lauren Marie in there, and Sue Monster, and uh, even, I think... Ida Greenback said she watched it. Oh, good. Diane D and everybody that's so people really I I, I loathed as I am to admit it. I think it had more fans and jumps. It did. It. Absolutely. And I'm looking for guests. If you want to join, email us at the deafening at gmail.com or say it somewhere where I'll hopefully see it. Everybody DM. here is welcome, by the way. And they would they will be on <sighs> all the um, audio services. Uh, yes. To listen to. Anyway, you can DM me also on Radio Gunk. Um, you can say it in the Wino Forever thread over there, however you want to do it. Just let me know. Put in the comments on one of our videos, too. I don't feel any pressure. It's not like there's some performance anxiety. A lot of people are not comfortable with their own voice or too I'm many choices. It. If and why, what, how much have you got? If we got it together, if so, how often he should use my heart as soft and uh, the western town and dead and worlds, the eastern boys and western <laughs> girls, western girls. And uh, if you need a buffer, I will be there. I'm not going to be on every episode, but I'll you be will on be, a You lot will the of next them. one. Yeah, the next one I have to be on. So if you're, I want to get David for the mother daughter fashion show, which is coming up next week. So he needs to let me know if he's available. No, I'll I'll email you. If you're intimidated by Sarah's Liz Cheney uh, command and <laughs> it's, uh, silent assassin uh, energy, I will be there as a buffer to uh, diffuse the intimidation energy she has. I know she's very intimidating. When I did the um, Every Dream Has Its Price Tag episode solo, I did it at six in the morning. So somebody was sleeping in the next room. So I had to kind of keep my voice a little low. Uh, but... I, uh, I'm not, I'm not worried about it. All I'm doing is watching a television show and bitching about the people I see. That's the only pressure you have. Share your honest thoughts about the show. If you love it, you love it. Great. Um, I'm not going to debate you. We will just enjoy each other's opinions. It take broad as a, um, um, 
what's the term of endearment, Gunga Dan? Uh, if you'd like to be, you more than welcome to be. Uh, Miss Sarah, says A. Smith. Miss Sarah? But I will only show up for the ethnic episodes. <laughs> well, yeah. you already, you missed the maid. I think she's, well, she's in season one again a couple times. Uh, I forget where Lucy Lou is. I think she's in this, ep- this season two. Anyway, we'll figure it out. Um, what about Jesse? Just, um, that's a long, that's 10 years from now, but that's by the time I get to college. Andrea's, uh... A future husband and uh god crazy robin had me laugh and i was watching uh i think i was watching like a, a a laker bucks game or something it was definitely an nba game i just can't remember which one and uh I lo- i'm looking at a comment and crazy robin pops up and it just said she says oh great <laughs> jesse jesse and andre a 245 year old newlyweds <laughs> yeah <laughs> a freshman in college with hamburger meat hair on top of his head it's <laughs> And somehow yeah. I missed it when she originally said it. Like, it was one of those things that went by. I don't know why, but <laughs> Je- yeah. Jesse. Uh, we're in for a very fun time. Even the bad seasons, there's plenty to mock. Donna will be my target after Brandon leaves. What did your crazy cartoon cat Camilla do during when you uh, were uh, doing that remember. solo? I don't how remember. Long, how long did you do it for? I haven't listened to it yet. It was an hour. It was the first hour of the last episode. Uh, you went from someone who hated the sound of her own voice. I don't even who, care anymore. Who passively didn't even want to do this, to now doing your own hour show with no, with with no sidekick or any kind of um, and anyone to bounce off of. That's pretty good. I don't know if it's any good. Go to Patreon and judge me in the comments. I don't care. But I am here to support you as our audiences and make sure you are compensated for your talents. Um. The maid went the way of Chuck Cunningham on Happy Days. Oh, that. Oh, yes. Okay. 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 Yeah. 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 Or, um, God, what's another character? Oh, Jesus Christ. Look for uh, Captain Jenko is a better one than that. Yeah, but suddenly the maid. Let's get off nine hundred two in a second. But uh, suddenly the maid. Uh, she comes on. She can't speak a lick of English. Two episodes later, she's like. My niece is here visiting. Um, <laughs> she's going to live with me. Okay, honey. <laughs> how about Salma Hayek? Um, how long has she been in America for and still has the broken English? She's got the cans, though. She can get away with it. But, I mean, I think that's her brand. I think her PR people won't let her speak perfect, meticulous English. She's been here longer than Mexico, like like th- twice as long. Yeah. And yeah I, still- I can't. Penelope Cruz is probably... More of a better example. Remember her in Blow? She goes, why are you spending? Why are you She's spending? got hot Yorsh. Javier Javier Bardem to speak Spanish to. Yeah. In the middle of the night during passionate moments. Oh. He, he almost played Frankenstein in the, uh, did you, the, I can bring anything back to Depp. You know, that's my superpower. Um, so very, very briefly, they, and actually Entertainment Weekly, it went as far, you know, it's legitimate if Entertainment Weekly did um, a cover story on it. Mm-hmm. So as the Marvel and DC universe started to really, really marinate and become huge, they announced the fair use um, public domain monster universe. So meaning like, you know, the, the cereals that I eat now, Frank Frankenstein, You're like 10, um, the invisible man, uh, Jesus, I think Mr. Hyde. Uh, the mummy again with the mummy and some kind of Dracula and they, you know, Jew brought who fights Draculas and they put them all in the same kind of shared universe. And Depp was to play the invisible man, which eventually went to the broad from Elizabeth Moss from, uh, from um, Mad Men. Mm -hmm. And that was part of one of Tracy Jacobs um, pushback on him that he he butchered the invisible man thing that, that eventually went to Elizabeth Moss, which is actually like made her a bigger star than she was on Mad Men. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tom Cruise was in the mummy, I guess, which actually came out, right? Yeah, it did. Unfortunately. Kind of, I don't know why they needed to do another one. Did that bomb? Yes. Good. Russell Crowe was to play Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. Um, Javier Bardem was supposed to play Frankenstein. And then all of them were on on the cover at the same time of Entertainment Weekly, and they just stopped the whole thing. Mm, that sucks. I th- did, did did the Russell Crowe's thing ever come out? I don't know. 
Oh, I don't think so. I don't. I, geez, I can't remember. Um, but the cruise thing, and and they just stopped it on. Depp was supposed to be the Invisible Man, mm-hmm. and that uh, and it went to Elizabeth Moss. They rewrote the screenplay. They tweaked it towards her, and uh, it was oddly successful. I couldn't believe it. Mm-hmm. And he turned it down for something. I God damn it! I want to say <sighs> they might have pushed him out. I'm not. I'm not sure why it didn't come to fruit. He. Oh, okay. I remember. I remember. He was. He was. He. His. His price tag was too high. Okay. Oh, so that's he was fine. looking at that 25 million price tag, and they went another direction. And I, again, with the uh, with the Amber Heard allegations at, at an all time high, you know, when he was at the lowest, they decided let's just do this efficiently. Mm-hmm. Yeah, David C. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Invisible Man came with Moss came out during or before COVID, but they filmed it like when Depp was had really bad public sentiment. Um, Crazy Robin, we just brought you up. Welcome, our new bean princess. Mm-hmm, of we course, just brought you up, Crazy Robin. Is that great joke? You got a great joke that caught by me somehow, and I put it back in. <laughs> Frank is going to be played by Mike Shea. Says Brendan, a reference everybody gets who's not from Sable, New York. <laughs> Brendan used to call this guy Sable Frankenstein all the time. <laughs> <laughs> like a- any chance he got. Um, God damn it. <laughs> Brent, Brendan has no Brendan does not care who gets who that references for 0.00000001% of this audience. Lauren Marie says she's gonna listen to you tomorrow, Sarah. She's far behind on her Patreon content. She needs to Okay. Sounds good. Compliment. I'm gonna hold you to that. It's all makeup and grunting. You know what that's from, right, Sarah? Uh, yeah. What? Uh, Frankenstein? No, no, that, that <laughs> quote. What you're doing. The, the, no. the Martin Landau quote. No. Oh, Ed Wood. Gr- yes. yes. Yes, I I should know that. I heard half of it. I apologize. Um. May so I yes. say something first yes. before we get into the good stuff? Yeah. Okay. When I bear with me a moment, folks. I just want to say, when I make thumbnails for this channel, I try to give you a general idea about what we're going to talk about in that episode. The example I'm thinking of here is our last episode called The Rolling Stone Disaster, Part 5. Based on that title, it might get a little bit negative. negative. Right. Now, when we get comments on an episode like that about why are you not nice to Johnny... Oh my god, um, I have that up here. Okay. Are you looking at it too? No, I'm not okay. looking at it. Let me finish. When I we get comments basically insulting Arm because he's always negative about Johnny Depp and they don't care how many times he's seen the astronaut's wife. If I I'm going to say this going forward and this is the last time I'm going to say it and I, why do I have to chastise adults? Have some common sense. Read what the thumbnail says. You should get a good idea about what we're going to talk about. And if I have to put up a goddamn trigger warning before every episode, because we talk about a man's life, good and bad, then the future is doomed. Thank God 95% of this country has common sense. Unfortunately, Twitter has brought out this small percentage of people who can't handle anything negative in their world. And they have to have their support dog. They have to have their therapy. We talk about a goddamn Rolling Stone interview. He did not look good in this interview. We presented both sides. You're going to have to hear this on this channel once in a while. We don't just talk about how cute he looks in every photo. We're a little deeper than that. I hate men. If this is what society is coming to... I am going to put a bed of knives on in my backyard and jump off my roof and end it now. And me saying that right now, probably just put like a self-harm restriction on this video. So we probably will lose half of our audience by me be, having common sense here. No, we so won't. if you can't handle this, we are not talking down about the man. We are discussing things that have happened in his life. I need people to grow up. That's all I'm asking. Thank um, you. That's a great rant. I'm not going to be uh, as histrionic as that. 
I, oh, I was mean, that histrionic? No, I mean, as a compliment to you. I, I'm going to, I want to read exactly what you're talking about here. And I'm going to speak to it. There's Johnny Bye Bye, who is the ultimate uh, depth contrarian, along with uh, G Canada, but a lot of it is shtick. Um, <laughs> thank you, A Smith. Arm is more real about Johnny Depp than Johnny is about himself. I agree with that, A Smith, and that's a great compliment, sir. Thank you so much, and thank you for joining us again on your tremendous edition on the last Jump Street episode, uh, season one, season two, episode one, season um, custody of a clown with Barney Martin. Uh, always, 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 always welcome. So this is what she wrote. This is what Sarah's talking about. Um, this is from Holly Pop. And believe me, we are, uh, I honor that. I love that you listen. You're allowed to present this point of view. I'm allowed to push back on it. I love your passion. I appreciate your passion. So she writes here. Hey, are there any plans for an episode that features something maybe positive about Johnny Depp? Your channel is described as, quote, an extensive and objectively opinionated look at the life and career of John Christopher Depp II. However, every episode consists of you insulting, degrading, shaming, bagging, and slurring every aspect of his life. Hey, I appreciate objectivity, but arm. In particular, you don't appear to have any when discussing Depp. I don't know what motivates such hostility and hatred towards them, <laughs> but it seeps into every single topic of conversation relating to him. Hey, no exaggeration. Whenever Depp is discussed, it becomes an opportunity to disparage him. The negativity is so perfect. I love the vocabulary, Holly Pop. I'm almost like not even paying. I'm just, I'm just like getting a chubby over these words you're using here. We love a good $5 word, and so does Depp. The negativity is so pervasive that an impartial or even remotely positive episode would be a welcome change at this point. Well, this isn't it. Your channel's content is your prerogative and Bobby Brown's. But mischaracterizing it as objective when it's anything but is dishonest. If you want to keep dragging Depp in an episode after episode after episode, be honest about what you're doing. Arm, if you're such a Depp fan... Uh, she fishes right deep. Uh, maybe deep is you know Freudian slip. Surely, there's something positive you can discuss at this point. If not, then perhaps you are not the fan you think you are. Regardless, this is the best part. Easily, regardless of having seen the astronaut's wife eight times. <laughs> I, I've already I've already talked about my opinion on this. Great, I, I like dissension. Look at G Canada. We let him go run wild. I know. But oh God, we got to read G Canada underneath it. He's such my a issue is imp. You say you're objective and opinionated, but you only say negative things. Isn't that the definition of objective and opinionated? We we yeah. it's not only negative. First of all, it's everything. We're not going to lie. We're not going to go on and grift. Let me let me say that one more thing. Okay. And then I'm done with this forever. We lose out on so many super chats because we talk about everything. I'm not popcorn planet where I'm going to lie to you and act like I give a shit about Johnny Depp. Who's not a real fan at all. But I, I, and, I mean, none of these people are. None of these people saw Arizona Dream in the West Village like I did in 1992. I'm not going to lie to you and act like I give a shit about Johnny Depp and Britney Spears because I know that that is pandering to Twitter people and making them emotional and wanting to fight for Johnny. He doesn't give a shit about Johnny Depp <laughs> or Britney Spears. He cares about the dancing illustrations going off in his stream, meaning you have donated $100 to him. And this is, that's how he pays his bills. And I'm talking about the other people, too, that were covering this trial. We lost out, too, on a lot of trial coverage because we weren't lying to you. So go with go with God. Go with however you want to go. Enjoy Popcorn Planet. He's going to move on to another topic, and I'll never mention Depp again. He got his photo op with Depp, so now he can say he's a, he's a Depp warrior, and he's a, a warrior for victims. Meanwhile, he's on the other side of a victim. But I'm not saying anything else. He doesn't know Ed Wood from Ed Hardy. By the way. Exactly. But the trial's <laughs> over. The money flow has stopped. He's moved on. So all of you have a great day. Go with, like I said, go with God. If you think he's your God, go that direction. Nice rant, Sarah. Where's Melvin to um, get a chubby over your anger? Because no one loves anger more than Melvin. I love the passion, Sarah. I love the anger. 
Um, I'm just going to say, let me just pull this up again. Um, I don't know, Holly Pop, and I again, I appreciate your pushback and passion. I am not here to. Um, what I'm going to say, I have. You want to compliment? Have Sarah? Would you say? I, I, no matter what I say, that's construed as negative. I called the guy the most charismatic human being. <laughs> Endor actor entertainer in the history of mankind. Does it get any better than that? How many times? Every episode I say that. No matter what I say that's remotely negative, it can't possibly be tantamount to me saying he's the most charis charismatic individual in the history of mankind. If I don't know what else I can say that's gushing more than that. If all we can do is talk about how cute he looks in every photo, even when he doesn't look cute, first of all, we're going to have a five minute show and we're doing a disservice to the man if that's all we talk about. So, you know, I have also if, said you, if you're not happy here, go move I'm on. Not, I'm not going to go over every positive thing I said, but I'm going to say the main ones that you can't, no one can usurp. I have also said he is the top. One percentile, maybe the number one chameleon actor that can straddle the line between leading man and character actor that nobody else is capable of doing. A man who can turn. You have you rooting for George Young, who's responsible, besides A. Smith, for 90 percent of the cocaine influx into this country. And you're rooting for the guy. He can play a serial killer in Sweetie Todd. And you're rooting for him to chop everybody's heads off with, with, with barbershop razors. Yeah. What more of a compliment could be than that? Mm -hmm. And I, I'm very... I also said, and I'll leave it. This is the last. I mean, I could go on forever, but no, I'm, I'm going to move on. I'm done talking about it. The man launched the Fox Network <laughs> on his charisma in 1987. He started the Fox Network. There'd be no Fox NFL. There'd be he and Christina Applegate as the homecoming king and queen of the Fox Network. There'd be n none of this would exist. The mm -hmm. anything Fox entity from from Rupert Murdoch to to Barry Diller, the, like Stephen Cannell said to me on West 81st Street and and Broadway at Barnes and Noble, Fox executives should send him Christmas bonuses every year for starting the network. Stephen mm -hmm. Cannell, co-created 21 Jump Street, said this. I will also say, and this is, I swear to you, this is the last super uber compliment, and we'll move on to the, some of the stories. <laughs> there is no better person in Hollywood, a, 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 an example for humanity and to bridge the gap of celebrity, the velvet rope of the um, plebeians and celebrity that he on any set that he's on. When you have the ability to, to treat the... PAs and key grip in the same way that you treat your co-star and director. There is no better precedent to be set than that for an example of how mankind should be if we're supposedly treating all human beings as equal. Mm -hmm. There's no better example than him doing that. And there's no better virtue or quality to have in a human being than that. How's that as a compliment, Holly Pop? Think... Let's see you do better in the comp than, than me. In the... Well, Head on over to, uh, I forget their names now. I haven't watched them I'm since. Not, we're not chasing. I want you to listen to every episode. And I want your, I don't care if if you're biased, but Jesus Christ, at least acknowledge those compliments I just said, which is virtually every episode. So mm -hmm. no matter what, anything I say, if I just report the truth, I don't like, if I creatively don't like his film choices, I'm going to say so. Yes, I can pick a better script than he can in modern day. I think he's lost touch like Colin Oates in terms of what a good script. I think he needs to get keep his eye on the ball and a little more Ted Williams on those seams. But that doesn't it doesn't d dismiss all of the crazy 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 virtues and compliments I have I have issued that, that 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 make him a little walking higher off the ground than any of his peers in mm -hmm. every way shape and form. Yep. That's why we're doing this. So it's a script choices. There's, there's this lifestyle. There's friends I hate of his. I despise Marilyn Manson. I despise his music. I think he's a poser. I think that Depp will, as a staunch uh, mu man of musical integrity, which Depp's band was in the 80s and all these artistically, 
Marilyn Manson is everything he would hate getting into music, right? It's gimmicks. It's He doesn't sing. He doesn't play instruments. I don't even think he writes his own lyrics. Marilyn Manson is everything that if you have musical integrity, you should be against. It's hot topic poser gimmicks. He doesn't write his own. He doesn't play an instrument. He can't sing. It's all, it's all makeup and grunting. So, yeah, I'm pushing back on that. I hate Marilyn Manson. I hate him. All right, and let's I, move on. And I, and I hate men. Let's take that down. I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Holly Pop, seriously. Um, welcome to the Deafening family. Please continue to listening. I respect your passion. And uh, we probably agree much more than you think we do. And I'm only I only said that because this is not the first one we've gotten from Twitter, from the Twitter crowd. So I love the Twitter crowd. They're great online. But come on. All right. And now we're moving It would be on. a very boring place to go if all we did, like Sarah said, is gush over how cute or just um obsequiously lap his ass the whole time it would be so boring and i'm not doing it as forced i'm just calling it like i see it mm -hmm. nothing i've said is contrived or forced right i mean do i do i do it, does it sound like i'm trying to be a provocateur no. by being negative I, it's honesty and that's what we said from day one so and that's what depp himself claims that he honors so let's let's keep that um tone going right yep johnny bye bye thank you you're here because i want to personally thank you again for all your generous as you put it modestly moving stuff around the internet he has given us so many links and gifts of books and i know i don't even know where to this start this guy is incredible he found by the way and i haven't read it yet he gave us a christian slater book yeah now i always bring christian slater up there in this bon jovial loves christian slater and I don't know if he talks about Depp in his book, and I don't know if – so they had some – you know, the Winona Ryder thing. I, I, a lot of people don't realize, and I don't know if he brings this up, but he was supposed – he was up for Ed Wood, and he didn't get it. So there's the, – these two have a weird history. I remember reading an article with Christian Slater, and they were asking him about all the Hollywood heartthrobs of the time. This is like a, in the 90s when he was at kind of at his peak, and they bring up everybody, Keanu Reeves, Brad Pitt. He's a compliment for everybody. They get to Depp, and he just goes – you know what? I don't think about Johnny Depp at all. And something's going on. That's a on. lie. Yeah, it's <laughs> definitely. <laughs> it's, I think he thinks about him more than anyone. But that had to do with Winona Ryder and Ed Wood. I mean, there's no question about it. And I don't Let's know. If, put just us up on the screen. I don't want to look at that comment. You're going to get <laughs> you're going to get a wellness check, Kevin Nash, huh? I know, because I said I was going to jump off the roof. Little Deppead 777. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I love that name. Little Deppead, right? That's good. her mm -hmm. rap name. I'm assuming you're she. Um, Cindy Clausen, welcome. We love you. Coming to a happy place. Cindy Clausen's always very, very <laughs> generous to come. She is on Texaho. Welcome back. And the millennials. It, of course. There's a there's a millennial generation X comment by Texaho right out, right out of the gate behaving accordingly. Um, so thank you, Cindy Clausen, for the Patreon compliments. We love having you. There's Crazy Robin. I've learned so. Thank you, Crazy Robin. I've learned so much about depth there and joining this podcast. That's the best. Up here. That's my favorite compliment. Is I would never be into depth unless you know without this show. But I, I like the show. That's my favorite compliment. What's little depth heads pretty representative of um the holly pop right little depth head did you just hear my compliments yeah, the does it get any better than what i just said Depp have you ever commenting. heard any okay she's comp i didn't i'm still behind <laughs> that's usual <laughs> i'm in cp time on the chat no oh, jesus lauren marie that comment doesn't even make sense the person obviously doesn't listen thank you lauren marie now that's that's we lauren marie's always rational and right about everything and you're gonna keep it up aren't you <laughs> i'm not keeping what up the, what the comment about? i five times i said take it down oh no that's okay I'm... <laughs> but the holly pop um you're getting a lot of air time here but um I you're know, always welcome back it. i am i i'm sure we are on the same page far more than you think please stick around please i'm begging <laughs> and i'm a big one. i'm a big one. uh g canada is running should we read g canada's com comment oh we got it right you do what you want. Okay, so G Canada, who's a depth provocateur, he's like a kind of like he's our impish Canuck friend who's kind of um, 
He gets off on being the contrarian. Yes. <laughs> he has hashtags like Amber's IQ is higher than arm. Hashtag the UK court got it right. Stuff like that. I mean, you know, he's just a very, very funny dude. He writes, hey, poor Johnny can't fight his way out of a paper bag with a hole in it. I love when 140 pounds, he's a little more than that. 140 pounders talk tough. Hit him. Hit him with a brick. Okay, Johnny. You got more security than Howard and, and your ex-wife is tougher than you by a mile. Just hide behind the bodyguards and yell at people because that's what you're good at. <laughs> he's such a dick. He doesn't even believe what he's saying. He's so. such a dick. <laughs> I just laugh. He doesn't, he's just doing it to... How about that? But he pays attention because how about the quote of Depp's mom, Betty Sue, telling him to hit everyone with a brick mm. all the time? <laughs> that's pretty good that he retained that. You know? Johnny yeah. Bye Bye loves you in overdrive, by the way, Sarah. I, I you, you I'm on my drive home because I as soon as I walk in the door, I got to start this show. Basically, I was thinking maybe I should mention that. I didn't think I would get mad when I was saying it. So, whatever. Because I know how much work you put into this, and I think you know how much work I put into it. And not even if, just work, but thought. I really, really <laughs> want to move like... on. I really want to move on. I never should have started this, but um, if we had lied from the beginning. I understand, but we've stated this from the first episode. So. It's so boring to just kiss his ass the whole time. It really, but I'm not, nothing I'm doing is hyperbole. I'm just calling it like I see, it, usually from an artistic standpoint mm -hmm. in his, in his personal life. There's some, there's some stuff I disagree with as well. Um, like a Marilyn Manson, just one yes. example. I don't, so um, I'm going to keep saying that. You can't love. I don't care who. It's like it's like a, a sports fan criticizing his own team that wants the very best out of his team all the time, and they only do that because it's passion. Mm -hmm. Do you love everything the Trailblazers do? No, especially yesterday at the tread, That's trade right. line. That's right. <laughs> do you love everything the Cleveland Browns do? Yes. Oh come on. <laughs> Crazy Robin, thank you, Sarah. Again, we must keep the mantra. We give an F because it doesn't stop the free flow of opinions. That's right, Crazy Robin. In this day and age, criticism is considered bashing. These people feel valued. Bring in, thank you, Pell L. And welcome, sir. I didn't say hi to you. Welcome, Pell L. We love you as well. You can start a new 21 Twitter. <laughs> These are the same. And by the way, yeah, also, Holly Pop, if, uh, um, you know, uh, my our 21 jump street patreon if that doesn't convince you of our fandom i don't know what does there's no, not no a kidding. human being on the planet including patrick hasberg and stephen cannell that know more about that show than i my entire weekend starting now friday nights through sunday are taken up with this show and you'd put even more work in than i do by a mile easily I'm but <laughs> it's true no it's true <laughs> your but... thumbnails take like four this I have to say, this go. isn't. I'm not trying to just like, you know, return the compliment because of. But your filmmaking skills are getting really, really tight. Really, really mm -hmm. like you know, uh, Catherine Bigelow esque. Bon Jovi will be proud of you. I record. We both record from Friday night, basically through Sunday, and. For this show and the Patreon, making the building the Patreon up, which we've got to build up because you have, you are determined we're not going over two dollars. So to make a profit on the Patreon, people can give whatever they want, but that's the minimum. Well, of course, I just, but, initially it was just to get it off of here because the the copyright Nazis are oh, out it's, of control. It's, I will be doing a Jump Street well, recording, and you'll play something, and I freak out because I'm like, oh my god, copyright! Oh wait, it's Patreon. That's all right. It's so it's such freedom. I know, isn't it? It's crazy. I know. Oh, I feel anyway. the same way. All right, let's move on. Um, Johnny Baba is a great line. I mean, like this is a guy who's a depth contrarian, and he seems to know the. Does you want to see a depth contrarian Reddit um, subreddit? It's called Depth Delusion. Yes, you mentioned Holy, it every episode. I mention it all the time, and it's <laughs> you get a lot of like stuff on there just to use as sort of stories but like because they're more rabid than the actual fa they know more about him than the actual supposed and many of them death for lives do so, was, but i'm telling I, a lot of them are ex fans kind of like what we did to howard where we sort of turned on him a complete 180. they know crazy stuff sarah like going back to just going wow that's not that is not some novice just reading up on it now mm -hmm. there's just like i don't know it's a crazy create, but Johnny Bob, I would love this the depth illusion subreddit. He goes, Sir Johnny Bob, I writes, 
Sean Betts using his Holly Pop account again. <laughs> <laughs> that is a great, great depth security reference. Or maybe it's uh, I hate men. Who <laughs> monster loves when I say I hate men? <laughs> Bashing rich, pretentious Hollywood actors is fun. Uh, I mean, Depp prides himself on being unpretentious on movie sets. That's the that's from his words. His words. Speaking of Amber Turds, as little Depp head. There she is with an LOL. Yeah, she's been here the whole time. I you, know. I'm just trying you got to lost. I, I spent too much time on every individual comp. There he is. There's G Canada. Not too. <laughs> thank you, Cindy Clausen. Once yes, again, thank you, Cindy. we love you implicitly uh, for everything you do. Our page. There's David. David just sent me a funny thing. He, David, uh, I gotta say this. He's he's six degrees of debt being where he is, whether it's a uh, sweetser or. So he said he worked with someone who worked with, um, did a soundtrack. I'm trying to see if I can get this right. I'm gonna quote David. He goes, I just my friend played the violin in a band with this weird album of sea chanties, and one of them was called The Mermaid, sung by Depp and Patti Smith. I just texted her and she said she wasn't in studio when the band recorded, but I forgot that. That's so crazy. That's so <laughs> crazy. I forgot about that too. Patty Smith is one of Depp's like Viper Room kind of dinosaur rock and broads like Chrissy Hine that he has forged a relationship with. Uh, she She's definitely like a huge confidant of his, Patty Smith. Mm -hmm. And I don't know a ton about her, almost like in the vein of uh, Jeff Beck. I know what I most people know, a couple yeah. songs, and that's about it. Um, Sue Monsters. I just watched Scissor, Scissor Hands on AME last week. Such a great catch. It really, I think they need to do a um director's cut of that Sue Monster. I want to see, I want to see deleted scenes added into that. And I don't know what the deleted scenes are to this day. They don't really show you what they were. Uh, don't you want to see a half hour added onto that movie, Sarah? Um, I would like two hours added onto that movie. I love yeah, that me movie. Too. Me too. Yes, I know you were here before, little deathbed. I just, uh, I think I thought it was like a cameo appearance. I just wanted to make sure. There's a lot of people that have ripped off your name. I, I, there's a little deathbed seven seven six. There's a little deathbed seventy seven. There's a lot of people stealing your 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 act, and uh, I'm just I'm just vetting it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> okay, first story. Um, Crazy death. And this is why I, I'm a very last minute kind of person in a lot of ways, but I'm glad I am in this case because I wouldn't have seen this story. I brought this gentleman up before and it goes back to 21 Jump Street with this guy. And it's very, very, I think we should do a whole show on him someday. His name is Jeffrey Ballard. He's a publicist who died uh, at 64, who is Depp's original publicist during the 21 Jump Street years. So this is from The Hollywood Reporter. And this is some crazy shit in this guy's life. And I don't know where to start. With this guy and his Ronald Reagan obsession and his dog Reagan, as you can see this, and Charlie Sheen and Paul Ab Jeffrey Ballard, publicist for Charlie Sheen, Paul Abdul, and many others, dies at 64. He started out in the business while in high school, as you, you know, as you can all relate, right? Uh, worked with Nancy Reagan, Dick Van Patten of Eight is Enough, and it is enough to fill our <laughs> lives with love. Johnny Depp who he lists fourth, which is bizarre, and Lori and Lori Lachlan of um, cheating to get in college, uh, cheating on the SAT fame, who from, is from Hop Hog, Long Island, I might add. Um, what's her name on uh, uh, Full House, Sarah? Uh, oh, Becky. Aunt Becky, Aunt Becky. Mm -hmm. That's right, that's right. Jeffrey Ballard, the veteran publicist who represented the likes of Charlie Sheen, Lori Lachlan, Johnny Depp, Paul Abdul, and Matthew Perry, Sarah, who we've seen pictures of Depp with. Um, that's originally the Fox original lineup. They became friends from that. A lot of people don't realize that. Depp's actually friends with Matthew Perry, which is bizarre. Um, Ballard died January 30th at UCLA Santa Monica Medical Center after a long battle with lymphoma. Brad Bessie, director of communications and talent relations project Angel Food. Told the Hollywood Reporter Ballard's client roster, Ballard's client roster at one time or another has also included Zach Efron, Ryan Seacrest, C. Thomas Howell, Rob Gronkowski, Christy McNichol, Cuba Gooding Jr., Jared Leto, Willie Ames. This is all hate is enough. Look at this. Hate is enough shit, Sarah. Jerry Van Dyke, Carrie Elwes, Bernie Capel played Doc on The Love Boat, Peter Marshall, and Corbin Burnson. 
Mm-hmm. He was in Major League with Charlie Sheen. Ballard represented Charlie Sheen during his Oscar campaigns for Platoon and Wall Street. While most publishers react, he thinks far in advance, evaluates like any likely outcomes, and then figures out what we ought to do. Sheen once said about Ballard, I've often, I've never met another person in the industry who does this as well. He's never short on showing common courtesy to everyone he encounters. He was a co-executive producer in Sheen's 2014 series, Anger Management. So that's the thing he came out with, with two and a half minutes, this lazy ass sitcom where it was like a, a group um, therapy thing. You know who else worked? Uh, Sam Simon was a producer on that, Sarah. Mm-hmm. And co-creator. Charlie Sheen just, they just throw shit at him all day long. What a charmed life he has. Ballard began his career in pub, uh, publicity when, uh, as a high school journalism student, like Brandon Walsh, he visited the set of 1977, 1981's ABC series Eight is Enough and wound up signing actors Dick Van Patten and Adam Rich. He then played an active role in Nancy Reagan's Just Say No campaign against drugs, being invited to the White House and working on celebrity events with the First Lady and President Reagan. You know where I'm going after this, right? Mm-hmm. There. He started out with Depp when the actor was starring in 1987 to 1991's Fox series 21 Jump Street. So Depp visited the White House with this guy. And I never understood how that came about. But 21 Jump Street did all these say no to drugs things. And I didn't realize that he was the catalyst for all that back then. There was no way to know. There was no way to research. Lori Lachlan, longtime friend, visited Ballard often in his final days in the hospital. Jeff was a great friend that could always lift your spirits and wicked sense of humor, which he maintained even in his darkest hours, she said. Jeff was thankful for his blessed life and the many friends he made along the way and the opportunities that were afforded to him. I miss him very much. On Instagram, Paula Abdul wrote how she and Ballard met when they were teenagers and forged a mutual admiration as people and professionals that lasted from my Laker girl days to present day. She added, we worked together, played together, and we knew we were always there for each other. The word love hardly describes my feelings for Jeff and the compassion I've had for all he has soldiered through, but I truly loved him so much. He will be missed by all those who he's touched. And I, uh, you know, where the, boy, that, <laughs> that choice of words, right, Sarah? Yeah, I wouldn't go there. Tell us what you mean by that. Um, there were rumblings about him and um, his uh, preferred, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sexual predilection. His preferences, his age group preferences. That's all I'm going to say. Do you see the screen? Yes. So this is his PR client list. Is Muhammad Ali at some point. This guy named Gary Clayton, Peter Winkler. William Mac, you know, Bill McNamara, right? Jared Leto. There's Ruben Studdard. Remember him? Bruce mm-hmm. Jenner at some point. Uh, Paul Abdul. I'm just naming people we'll know. Gilbert Gottfried. Jesus, I didn't know that. Gavin McLeod. Christian Slater, oddly enough. Huh. <laughs> Is that a picture of Depp in an astronaut's car over his right, left shoulder? Our right? Um, maybe. From MTV? <laughs> maybe. Christian Slater has some hair plugs on him. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. That's it. Uh, live with uh, Kelly and Michael, I guess. Um, it could be Camilla and her astronaut. <laughs> uh, Dick Van Patten. There's Paul Abdul again. Chuck Liddell, the UFC fighter. Rob Gronkowski. Gene Simmons. Uh, Connor Green. C. Thomas Howell, which comes up all the time with this guy. This picture's a Depp and C. Tom- Thomas Howell in the... Um, Late not eighties, Cheech Marin, who was in Once Upon a Time in Mexico, if you recall, Sarah, part mm-hmm. three of the El Mariachi trilogy. I wonder how that came about with him and Depp and that. Um, there's Kelly Ripa, who we, oh my God, Phil McKeon, did he die? Nancy McKean's brother. I think so. I'm not. I'm not a hundred percent. I think he was on Alice. Uh, Adam Rich, there's Nicholas himself. So well, okay. This is one. I want to thank Marta too for sending, adding, um, introducing us to the Kid Ninety documentary we did with David on here. Now this is how it all comes together, Sarah. Look at who he's with. Soel Moonfry, in the middle there. Everybody in the Soel Moonfry Kid Ninety documentary that Marta recommended is uh, from this his stable of people. Charlie mm-hmm. Sheen and the depths in there. So that's how that whole thing got together with the Ryan White charity and everything. That's Punky Brewster. Okay. Yeah. 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 This Cheryl Ladd. 
there's C. Thomas Howell again. There's then I'm gonna get so here we go with can kind of get it into the depth stuff. Here's Charlie Sheen. This is all from like the heyday of his, you know, Oliver Stone years. Sheen again. There's uh Michael J. Fox out of June 9th is strong in here because that's Depp's birthday too, same as Michael J. Fox. Uh Charlie Sheen, Anthony Betts. Let's go down. There's Leno. There's Sheen again. Now we're with Depp. Okay. So this is from the late 80s. This is Depp and Jeff Ballard. Times Square, New York on the right. Mm -hmm. This is all the Jump Street years. This is him again. Bottom left. Now this is bottom right. That's them in the White House screening room. Oh, yes. Okay, I see it. See that? So this is the original White House movie screening room that they use to watch sporting events and movies and God knows what. This is when Ronald Reagan's president. So that's why I call him the, on my thing. It says get the Depper and the Gipper. The Newt Rockney story. Ronald Reagan played uh, the Gipper in that old movie. Um, a lot of people may not may or may not know. This guy, Jeff Ballard, was like an insane Reagophile. He's obsessed with Ronald Reagan. It's really crazy. It's almost like Al Franken and Clinton. Like he... His, he named his dog Reagan. And so during the Jump Street years, Depp did these Say No to Drugs campaign stuff with Nancy Reagan. Um, you can see my my avatar. That's Depp shaking hands with Reagan. And so so Ballard dragged him to the White House. Depp is a huge liberal like me. And uh, so it was kind of an awkward thing for him. And then he goes on and gives the middle finger to – you saw the picture of him right in front of the White House. Yes. The finger, yeah. And so he, he, this is the two of them with Bon Jovi on vacation in Australia in the middle there. You're with me, right? Can you see these pictures? I yeah, I see them. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that, then, then I guess it's also in Sydney, Australia. They're on a fucking yacht to the right. This is Bon Jovi's yacht to the right. I mean, these okay. are great shots. These are great shots. So I, as you can see, this is Depp launching the Fox Network on the left with Jeff Ballard alongside. They would do those old Fox promotional things with the cast of Married with Children and Gary Shandling and everything. And that's the two of them posing. I never knew who this guy was because I'd see him lurking behind. They see the picture on the, I'm looking at here, the first one on the left. Mm -hmm. He's lurking in the background. And I would see this guy all the time. Like, what? Who is this guy? I could never track it. And now, you know, a few years ago. We know there's Depp on. Look at Depp's life preserver. I know. Put that on eBay, right? The McDonald's life preserver. I would smell it. I love what uh, De is Depp on Asics sneakers in this right? Uh, I don't know. I it's so far away. Oh, uh, this this is gonna freak you out. This is good. This is where I'm psychotic, and this is where Holly Pop really needs to give me my props, my pops. The sneakers Depp's wearing in the bottom right. <laughs> so I'm embarrassed to say this nerd stuff, but I'm going to do it. I, I got too far into it. In the episode in season two, I'm okay. So when he goes into the mental, the Kenny Weckerly comeback, when he goes into the mental institution to investigate the abuse of Kenny Weckerly, mm -hmm. he wears those sneakers in a scene where he's in a rubber room and he throws, he's, he's playing a game where he throws the sneaker onto a chair to try to like to try to kill time. And so that's the sneakers he's wearing in that scene. Mm, you know way too much. <laughs> um I think it's called I'm okay you need work. All right. So Kenny Weckerly. That would be true. Oh, by the way, Christina Applegate is in that episode. Yes. So it's season 2 and uh with horrible so hair. That's the sneakers he's wearing in that episode. That episode is coming up very soon. Okay, here's fucking Zach Efron, Vanessa Hudgens, who's actually got a little nice career for herself. She's done a nice job not being just a pretty girl, um, I have to say. A lot of people don't. Lisa Rinna, your favorite. There's Michael Strahan. You can fit Kelly Ripa between Strahan's teeth. How about <laughs> hook up with uh, Strahan and Vanessa Parody together? How good would that be, the, the teeth genetics on that? Oh, what would be the end result of that? <laughs> I don't know. I'd love to see it, though. I would love to see it. You got to put that 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 machine together where you can you can show what. It, oh, there's fucking Grant Goodeve. Who my Grant Goodeve over here? He sang when it is enough. Oh, Luke Perry, Sarah. I'm sorry to stop myself from singing oh, there. Luke. But oh, Dylan. Rest in peace, Luke Perry. I've always wanted Depp and Luke Perry to have some kind of relationship and maybe they, they did in my dream this guy may, may may it'll come out sooner or later john lovitz who's depp is friends with i went i never knew why that was and now i know that's how he knows lovitz i had no idea um they had a friendship in the 90s i don't know where it went crazy 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 
if if what Sarah says is true about um, the pedo allegations, I'm not I, sure I can make it's a rumor. I don't it, know. It's just there's a, there's a I video. Read it. There's a video right you showed me where a guy like really researches it. Yeah, but I don't remember what the video is called. But it's also mentioned on here you go, crazy days and nights. That there are rumors, so that's where I'm getting this from. That's where we're going. On that. Uh, no disrespect. Uh, thank you, A. Smith. Thank you, A. Smith. Um, what the hell was I gonna say? Oh God, there's up. There's a comment up here. Oh yeah, Hooper. I learned that from Monique. Yeah, <laughs> the the detente. The, the I learned, I learned that the the address of from. Yeah, it's exactly where I learned it from. It is very similar, though. The tone. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Crazy Robin. Another compliment for Sarah. The Deputy Awards are honestly beyond awesome. My goodness, nothing but greatness. And they're going to get better than that, Crazy Robin, as we Sarah executes all my dreams of the different categories I've created. Dep, um, Dep, best black friend. Um, oh, come on. Best, no, that's a, that's a real category. De, be, black actor Depp has worked with. So we're going to have, you know, Charles S. Dutton and Morgan Freeman and Stephen Williams and Holly Robinson and on and on and on. And we're going to put that. I'll probably make like five of them or whatever. Um, that'll be good. That's just one category. And best Depp. Um, God damn it. There's so many. I thought of some new ones over there. I'll, I'll get to them. As it, Let's, as it we'll talk about it later on another Cameo show. Cream. Only if you knew <laughs> who I really. Okay. Little Depp head right here. Only if you knew who I really was. I bet Give it's Johnny Depp. Hands. Give us some hints, little Depp, but I bet I can get it in three. It's guys. Johnny Depp. Yeah, it's, it's it's no, it's Jack Depp. I think it's oh. <laughs> Hi, Jack. <laughs> Hi, Jack. You're so mysterious. Jack and John are the same name. I hope you do. I was thinking maybe little Depp had, was Johnny's nickname for something on his body, so maybe uh, it's Johnny Depp. Uh, Josh Foster, welcome, sir. This better be good. I turned down Donna Summer's greatest hits. If you looked on the right side of my YouTube recommendations, you saw Jody Watley and uh, Expose because I was looking through some old lady stuff and uh, I was just getting that nostalgia and I was going after that old, uh, you know, the 80s. It's the funniest music. And Jody Watley is uh, one of Sarah's favorite, right? Uh, all right. I'm looking for a new love, Sarah. A new <laughs> love. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're dumping me? <laughs> <laughs> Sean Bett, G Canada's depth sec head of security, who replaced um, what's uh, Jerry Judge. That's the guy you saw at the trial who testified. He's an ex-LAPD. One of them, yeah. Uh, he has a crazy lineage um and history and career with the lapd like he did it all he worked in gang units right mm -hmm. was he was he a prison guard at one point or did he work I don't in the prison system rem i think so i think it was in the prison system as a as a consultant or something every facet of the lapd like it's i i if you ever get a chance to look up his credentials it's pretty crazy and i have a theory that um hello gina bobina welcome good to see you bulbulians in the chat uh, I call the, Gina Bobina chat queen, and it's every chat. <laughs> chat queen. She's bobiquitous. Gina Bobina like has Jesus been mentioned twins. numerous times on a big podcast called Who Are These Podcasts? She's so famous. She has imitators. She has people like stealing her identification, yeah. on her. like like mirroring her picture and then stealing the name, which anyone can do at any point. But we know that Bobina moves very well. She is an Opie trolling legend. <laughs> it's bobiquity feel as and the I, Jesus twins. I respect anybody who trolls Opie from Opie and Anthony. Uh, yeah, Carrie Elwes, uh, very underrated actor, Lauren Murray. I agree. They don't use him enough. Um, he had a he was big in the '90s, but they definitely don't use him enough. Platoon was the shit. Uh, the deleted scenes, G Canada, are uh, are really good. Depp's got a great deleted scene, and I don't know why they deleted it. It bothers the hell. I do know why. Because Oliver Stone was jealous that Depp was upstaging Charlie Sheen. You see, Holly Pop, there's another compliment. Depp's charisma is so strong. They delete his scenes in Platoon. Another compliment. Beat that. <laughs> um, so there's a great deleted scene in Platoon where Depp is sitting in front of Willem Dafoe. And I think I got to watch it again. Willem Dafoe is definitely one of them. I think it might have been Forrest Whitaker. And he's talking about he basically gives exposition on the on the platoon he's in of everybody's deal 
where they're from, what their deal is, how they got to the, why they enlisted, how they, maybe they got drafted. And it's really a good scene. And I think it's very necessary for backstory on everybody. And he's supposed to be like kind of smarter than everybody. Learner, the interpreter, like, so he's kind of like, and I listened to an interview with Oliver Stone and he said that he cast deaf because um, he's from the South. He okay. considered to be a poor white guy from the South mm-hmm. and that's Makes who sense. would join the military. Makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. Depp almost joined the Marines. Remember that story? I would in like the, to see him in, in a the Marines. Early 80s. Yeah. He said Uniform. he was, he said he was, when the music wasn't good, he was very lost. And he said, I think I might need uh, the Marines for Sturkshire and then wisely backed out of it. I think it would have lasted a, a week. <laughs> Not even a week. You know? <laughs> like me. He would have lasted, I would have lasted a minute. First time they yelled at me, I'd be, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's tough. It is rough. That boot camp is. Uh, I can't I like climb think, a damn wall. I like to think our Streamyard during the trial was your version of Streamyard boot camp for me. I had to learn really <laughs> fast for I threw nine you hours to the a wolves. day. <laughs> and you had to get out of bed at nine a.m. every day. Oh, earlier than that. Sometimes, yeah. To prep for it and then go. Like the sleep was the, the cycle was crazy, 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 crazy. And on your, it's six o'clock where you are. So that's crazy watching. I started to stream at five o'clock in the morning and then I had to go to work. Thank you, Sue Monster. We all hate to get old. Yes, we do, little deathhead. Yes, we do. Tell me. We all have Peter Pan complexes. I think think about it every day. I saw a great quote by um, Clint Eastwood, who I'm very off and on on him. I like some things about him, some things I don't. Sometimes he can be a total overrated tool, and sometimes he's great. He stands up for shit, and he's got a nice directorial film career. Um, Clint Eastwood said about aging, this is a great quote, and I think it was Bill Maher was speaking to Mark Cuban, Cubes Kong, about this. So Mark Cuban quoted Clint Eastwood, and he said that, he, you know, Cuban's 65. Um, I think he's going to age 30 years bringing Kyrie Irving onto the team. <laughs> so we'll say 95. That's a real funny sports callback, Sarah. That was real good. <laughs> I know. I had to. Sorry. I'm a fan of Mark Cuban. Uh, I know it can be polarizing, but Jesus, the guy does it the right. If, you, if you're in the NBA, you want him as an owner. And he really speaks his mind. He has a pretty good story of how he came to his riches. And it's someone you can kind of get behind. So he said to Bill Maher, asked him, like, Why, how are you stay so youthful? I can't believe you're 65. And he's like, he's like, I saw this quote from Clint Eastwood when I was growing up. And he said to don't let the old man in. Because mm-hmm. so, he was directing at like 88 years old. And he said, how do you keep doing this? And he says, I just don't let the old man in. And that's just kind of let just, just ignore what your numerical age is telling you to do. And I'm not saying be a Peter Pan. I'm just saying. I think that's the greatest advice I've ever heard. Simply said, don't let the old man in. And I'm not trying to be sexist. It's woman too. Don't let the old woman in. Just just keep whatever your heart's telling you to do, regardless of what you think your numerical age is telling you to do. Don't let the old man in. Don't forget that. I, I haven't. I, I mean, won't. obviously I'm quoting Mark Cuban. I watched this thing at least a month ago, and I'm, I, I think about that quote all the time. I know, right? Sue Monster, Paul Abdul. I would have thought Paul Abdul and Depp had some kind of history, but they don't. They don't. He's a perfect ex of Depp, isn't she? But she is an ex that never happened. From Arsenio Hall to John Stamos. <laughs> Sue, Sue, uh, little Depp head says, I'm turning 76. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's a good, that's a good dupe. So he broke in a dick. His publicist was in the late eighties is what is important. Um, the guy, Johnny bye by Jeff Ballard has some uh, crazy, crazy stories. And again, like he was with him and those weird years and he's got, started, I think he disengaged with him somewhere in the nineties. I think Tracy Jacobs might've taken him off him. I don't know when the hell they last worked together was, but mm-hmm. you can't find pictures of them together at like post 1990. At least 91. I mean, it's, maybe that's as old as I'll go. Um, so speaking of Depp, um, I want to show you another. Let's circle back to Jeff Beck again. This is this is a more on Jeff Beck's. Um, by the way, before I get to this, I keep forgetting to say this. 
here comes another compliment, Holly Pop, for Depp. Here comes another compliment. So one thing that's great about Depp is he he's so great with his fans, you know, and in in very hairy situations with the general public where he is fighting to sign autographs, being pulled away from PR people. We all know what a mensch he is, spending hours on sets of public enemies signing autographs. And I always got a kick out of that. He's hanging out with these dinosaur rockers who are very standoffish with fans. They're not really used to having any one-on-one interact. They're very like sequestered and closed off from any kind of one-on-one interaction with fans. And he's bringing Jeff Beck to like bars in Huntington and shit. And they're not used to having to do it. They look very uncomfortable. So even like Joe Perry and people like that, when Depp's doing these autograph signings, like the Hollywood vampires, they, they're not used to having to, to be intimate with fans. You know what I mean? It's funny that he puts them in that situation. I get it's the juxtaposition of these guys who are just, just very like lionized, like icons who never have to deal with people one on one. Who the commoners, you know, and that puts them in that position. I just get such a kick out of it. Because mm-hmm. you know when he does like signings after a, a a Jeff Beck show or a Hollywood Vampire show, they do like you know really extensive uh, fan interactions. And it's just funny to see these guys who have no, uh, never had to do that shit. You know, came along at a time when you didn't have to interact with fans that forced it as a situation. So this is Jeff Beck's widow, Allison Boshoff. If Sarah, if you can look her age up, I would lo- I would really appreciate it because I know she's significantly younger than Beck. I just want to know how by how much. Okay. Just just just, just for shits and giggles. Johnny Depp's solemn farewell to Jeff Beck, actor is the only other mourner to join legendary guitarist Widow and the dog for his burial at home, writes Allison Boshoff. Johnny Depp's late flowering fellowship with British guitar legend Jeff Beck was so meaningful to both men that Depp was the only other mourner present when Beck's wife, Sandra, or maybe I'll, I'll hint Sandra, look up Sandra Beck, I'm sorry. I thought Allison was the name of the wife. Said in her final farewells to him last Saturday, Sandra Beck, I guess. Um, Beck, uh, age 78, died suddenly in January, contracting bacterial meningitis. His funeral was last Friday, and it can be revealed that he was buried the following day in an unusual green ceremony in the gardens of his home in Wadhurst, East Sussex. His widow, Sandra, and their dog. She's 58. She's 58. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's got her by 20 years, which is... Not Rockstar horrible terms, nowadays. Like, you know. <laughs> yeah, they're they're equals. They're peers, twenty years apart. Uh, the fifty-nine-year-old. He says she's a year younger than Depp. Actor is <laughs> understood to be staying in Wadhurst post-funeral. Uh, friends say he reveres Sandra and her bond with Jeff. Uh, there was a genuine love between the two men. She said Johnny had a huge admiration for him and his talent. I'm told. <laughs> I'm told. As Jeff, uh, Jeff spent much of the lockdown at the couple's home. Yes, that is absolutely mm-hmm. true. And the run up to his disastrous high court action when he unsuccessfully sued a newspaper. This is what G. Cannon is talking about. This is his favorite publication, uh, the Daily Mail, for describing him as a wife beater after the breakdown of his marriage to actress Amber Heard. He and Beck also released an album last year and did a short tour in Europe and America. The actor, it wasn't very short, Sarah, right? That went on for months no c- compared to a normal tour it was a short tour i don't know it seemed long to me so they're not going to mention the virginia trial just the uk they might. trial. they might hmm. the actor supported sandra at beck's funeral arriving with her at saint mary's church in beddington sutton what is, what is this what is that beddington Sutton? what is Sutton? i don't know i don't live in i don't live in essex or wherever I you is. tell me what sutton is. no come on let's go <laughs> there's no sign of if you say let's go one more time I'm i said it once knocking you in the end there's no there's oh, no sign let's of go. <laughs> there's no sign of london lawyer joel rich that's such a with whom he enjoyed a romance last year and pals believe they broke up some time ago this has never really been conf- the joel rich stuff has never really been confirmed I don't, I'm not sure I believe that entirely. It's all How right. We you? got a lot of views on our Joel video, so it doesn't matter if it's confirmed. We do made you 10 believe, cents off that Do you video. believe they had a relationship? <sighs> How could you not? You're supporting this man day in, day out. You're in the backseat of the SUV with him. 
to court and from court back to the hotel. Right. You're seeing Where's this man going? on the stand, your front row every day, watching this man by yourself too. No one's his ever vulnerabilities seen that to the world. You fall in love. They gave her a whole pew to herself. I know. <laughs> Three rows back. Um, but again, it's not confirmed, confirmed, and I don't know why it would have been that, but it's funny. She never actually did anything in the, I mean, I guess she's like a consultant cause she didn't, she was never in the UK transcripts and she sure as shit. Well, she was on the Fairfax. team, the UK team. So I don't know. That's quite a gig, right? You never actually have to, you just kind of consult in and kind of just tagging along. And, um, that's a great gig if you can get it. I, a friend says I it would... was always Jeff's great wish that John. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, it's very petty, but I would sit there every night or every morning, I guess, before court and brush his hair into like his little ponytail and just kiss his little neck and say, good luck today, Johnny. I would shave it in the back. You're weird. I would have, <laughs> I would have like a Remington and I would shave, I would cut the ponytail off as soon as he dozed off. <laughs> and then I, I would turn his hair into nick of time Gene Watson hair when he woke up. You're like, what? well. <laughs> the only bad thing I would do, I would hide his cigarettes. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, again, when you have a lung cleaning uh, re- <laughs> uh, repair team, it yeah, does, you want to talk no... about not confirmed, and you you go into the <laughs> lung cleaning. Bon Jovial looked up the process. Apparently, it does. It doesn't exist. mean he does it. His life is too important to not have that done. To go down to cigarettes, <laughs> it's just too important. He needs to live for you until he's two hundred. Um, oddly enough he's going to turn 60 in June 9th. So will we all? That's fine. We're all turning 60 in June 9th? I feel like it, but eventually I will. Yeah. A friend says it was always Jeff's great wish that Johnny would find someone who was good for him, a soulmate in the way Sandra was a soulmate. They would talk about it often. The funeral was more starry than initially reported with the reclusive singer Kate Bush, who was very, I forgot about her. Keep running up that <laughs> Among those at the church, others included Rod Stewart, Ronnie Wood, friends from their days in the Jeff Beck group. The eulogies were given by Depp. God, I want to see this. God damn it. Did somebody record this? Please. Can you find her interpreter, please? What? <laughs> friends from the days in the Jeff Beck group and eulogies were given by Depp. Eric Clapton, Jimmy Page, and Led Zeppelin, Bob Geldof. Oh, my Bob Geldof over here. And Beck's best friend, Peter Richardson, who created the comic strip Presents. Singers, Joss Stone, who did, um, didn't she do the fucking, um, the Blow soundtrack? I don't know. You ha- you're the only person that owns the Blow yes. soundtrack. So. I'm Aldi May, Beth, Cowboy Beth Orton performed alongside the local choir. Depp and Beck met in 2014 in Tokyo when the Pirates of the Caribbean star was making a film and the legendary guitarist was on tour. Depp knocked on Beck's hotel room, as anyone can do, right? And introduced himself. Now, why, if he can do that to him, why can't I do that to Depp? Why, why can he do that, but I can't? Why can't I do that? I think that if he, that, right, we're all equals, according to Depp on the set. The PA is the same as the director and the leading lady. I should be able to do that. Okay. If you want it, side note, if you want to dig into like rock lore, look at the connection between Bob Geldof and Michael Hutchins. It's so interesting and soapy. Well, Michael Hutchins of Viper Room fame. Yeah, that's that's why he's famous from the Viper Room. Well, I mean, that's what I know him from in excess. Of course. You're one of my kind. <laughs> I've got to let you know. <laughs> So climb over here. But, uh, so he was uh, the early days of the Viper Room. Michael Hutchins was, uh, I guess they, you know, he performed there in the intimate setting of 82 people on a Monday night. And uh, Depp's just friends with every rock star. It's amazing. From Bono to Evan Dondo of the fucking Lemonheads. It is cr- to now um, kill a mic. Mm hmm. The hip hop artist from uh, Run the Jewels, who Depp has forged a friendship from City of Lies with. I want to know more about that. I want to see Depp tour with um, Little Mike, uh, Killer, Killer Mike. Oh, I'm looking at Chet. G, G Canada's over He's the top crazy, today. Right? He's crazy. <laughs> By the way, Gene Canada, you are definitely invited back. Don't think for a second we have any kind of like, oh, he was so. 
you hear Radio Gunk every every day. We do it. There's we have sound problems to this day. Hopefully that last one was rectified with the echoing. And it was like, I think the camera was on at the same time as something else. So that was causing all the echoing. But rest assured, you are um, you are honored. You are uh, a treasure in our midst. Please. Seriously. What is little Deadhead says she? I'm not fond of Kelly who? Ripa. Remember? Oh, Ripa. Okay. 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 Could have been anybody. Could have been Kelly who? Could have been Kelly Bundy. Could have been... Of all women pairings, from, I'm, I'm going to catch up on the chat here before. <laughs> sorry to stop myself from saying. I don't want to jump around. I'm so sorry. Lil Deadhead, G Canada admitted in a weak moment on the episode he was in that he doesn't believe what he's saying here. <laughs> he's just doing it to stir everybody up. If Madonna and Michael Strahan had a kid, you could drive a boat through the fucking tooth gap, says David. <laughs> well, they you... called Vanessa the Madonna of France, right? initially i don't know i i i i've watched her sing once i guess gina bobina said she's very big in canada I'm, i i heard she, that too because mm -hmm. montreal is very french and blah 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 but that makes a lot of sense hey she was she got a deppie award and, and um vanessa it's going to be arriving shortly but uh she got a deppie award for being his greatest love she was voted by the deppening fans i was actually surprised at that that winona Ryder lost to her yeah she won I, by a pretty good margin too. She got a lot of she got the Jennifer Garner, you know, um strong woman thing, you know, thing like of just having to be, you know, cheated on and you know, she's the French albatross in the trial, then still defended him. Like that's really that's that's a good woman. Mm -hmm. That's a good one. And she doesn't look like she cares about fame or being but, uh, in the with a home. lot of shit. Yeah. The kids love her too. They clearly mm -hmm. love her. They're running through fucking, you know, security, <laughs> being chased by paparazzi. She stood up to the paparazzi too in that thing. We, uh, what the oh, hell? Yeah, she yeah. turned around and like just tried to bite him. <laughs> oh, yeah, Vanessa's Vanessa, Vanessa, dare I say, is beloved. By the way, she does a great job in that Kevin Smith movie, Yoga Hoses, where she plays, surprise, surprise, a French teacher in a cameo appearance. If you don't, I it's don't even so know crazy. if I've heard her talk. If you're not a Depp fan, if you haven't seen Yoga Hoses, the whole family's in the movie. Jack Depp, as you can see in our ending, uh, the, the Deppening ending, has a cameo where he's a little kid that goes into a convenience store and gives a finger to his sister who is working. Mm -hmm. the con like, you talk about the opposite of Lily Rose's real life, though, working in a convenience store. It's just like. He's also the, the prince of towel snapping. Yes. Yes. And the towel snapping video, which I am going to add the next time into our ending that has to be in there the penthouse uh, penthouse five it's a little dark anyway all right snapping. you do what you want it's your it's your baby well he's i mean he's towel snapping david hurd does it get any better than that uh, he needs to towel snap david hurd in the in the face after what david hurd has been accused of <laughs> uh okay let me check let me catch up on the chat and then we'll um i just had a camille vasquez story of her representing someone from Yellowstone, it's her. I don't want this to turn into a Camille Vasquez podcast. Yeah, you please know, like, don't. I'm, I'm over I, it. Again, I sometimes you just need to. Or we could just skip it and get to the meat. And I love Camille. Don't get me wrong. And I was the first one to compare it to Evil Longoria. You heard it here first. I have a timestamp of that if anyone wants to prove it. Uh, in the beginning, and I also compared her to AOC in the beginning of this. The same speech cadence. Mm. Uh, she is as if AOC and uh, AO. Sigoria, which we call her as a nickname. Texaho, now you're like the most unworthy of my best. <laughs> Texaho, great quote, great music quote. Arm jam and a tech trying kind to of pump up the jam, pump up the jam. Rip to Jerry Judge, yes, little deaf head, yes, indeed. We're going to do a Jerry Judge show at some point. The Alfred Pennyworth of the Depp uh, family, mm -hmm. right, Sarah? Yep. He really was Depp's Alfred Pennyworth. Second father, yes. He's like Ronnie, the limo driver of Mund, and Alfred Pennyworth had a kid. Mm -hmm. Jody Watley played it. All you got to do, listen to that Australia like audio that. and how he stands up for Depp after she cuts his finger off and he lays it out. Unfortunately, because he passed away, that audio couldn't be used in the trial. Crazy Robin goes, Jody Watley played a concert at Disneyland, the one in Anaheim, for a graduation night. She is teeny. That, God, how jealous are we of Crazy Robin going to... Jody Watley playing at Disneyland. <laughs> right, right in her prime, too. God damn it. 
Who's the hotter Nubian princess? Crazy Robin or Jody Watley? I Crazy, Crazy Robin, Robin, please. Crazy Robin easily. I think she was jealous of Crazy Robin in the in the in the audience. J Jody Watley had about 10 hits, I would say. You are my everything. Right? Remember that right. one? Oh, that's two. I can't think of a third. To feel the love you bring. Is that another you one? Are my everything. Oh, okay. That was on the right side of my uh, YouTube channel. Wasn't it? They were like just generic, so many generic pop songs from the 80s and early 90s that just run together for me. I could not tell you who the band or the artist was. Well, that's the beauty about the internet now is you can learn the names. A lot of people... Um, a lot of times you think it's somebody, it's not. It's like a one-hit wonder who is imitating a bigger artist, so it's not the person. Little Deadhead, we have had this channel for November over a of year. Uh, well, technically, I put the trailers up July of 2021. So we Going our on first years, episode huh? was November. Oh, so in no, right, next November, it's going to be two years, right? A year yeah. and a half. Um, thank you, Sue Monster. Once again, we love you implicitly on the gunk circles. Uh, and here you're always so supportive. You always have great, nice, menschy things to say. We are nothing without the likes of you. Yes, Gina, they got me to send nudes. Texaho, Marines are hot. God, am I that far behind? Yes, you are. Yes. I don't even, know, I don't even think you're going in order. I don't know what you're doing. Um, G Canada goes, I would download a platoon scenes right now. I've never seen. Yeah, the extras are great, G Canada. And they should have had a uh, director's cut, which Oliver Stone refuses to do because it makes Depp look better than Charlie Sheen. I'm positive of that. Uh, the, by the way, and I think it was uh, Judy Tanuna, right? We were talking to you about the platoon documentary and the Wino Forever thread. Mm -hmm. The platoon documentary that Charlie Sheen produced on Amazon is phenomenal. It's it's like better than the movie, and he looks goddamn great too. Depp, here's another compliment, Holly Pop. Depp is such a mensch. He let his fellow actors who hadn't made a scent after Platoon stay with him in his apartment for months and months and months after Platoon, while he was doing Jump Street. Mm -hmm. And Did even you know though that? he don't know much about AIDS, he let Charlie Sheen stay with him. In the episode, You Ought to Be in Prison, uh -huh. in season two, when the return of Waxer Thompson, mm -hmm. guess who plays the warden in the, in the juvenile prison that you Waxer to, goes to? I think you told me, but remind me. Candyman, Tony Todd. Oh, yes, you was, told me that. Who okay. is his friend from Platoon. Mm -hmm. That's that's who he's throwing a bone to, throwing those shoes. Not, I think Tony Todd may have gotten cat, but still, it ain't a coincidence he's on there. It, it just isn't. And fear and loathing, and with Russell Buckins, the guy he's drag oh. racing against, oh. also on Platoon. That even that episode title just I I'm dreading that episode. In Platoon, he, his big line in Platoon is he goes he goes yes, yeah, Sarge torched the whole village. When they're when Depp's big scene when he's carrying the Vietnamese girl. Mm -hmm. Oh God, Jesus, Gina, I'm we're getting ripped off on Opie now. It's a fake. Did you blow up his spot? I hope, Gina. I think I saw that. I got I to gotta, I gotta get back in there for real and ask my hard-hitting questions to Opie. Don't let the old man in. Or <laughs> Jim Bartlett, Brendan. <laughs> Another Sable reference, Brendan. Everybody knows who I believe passed away, Brendan, right? Jim Bartlett. I thought I – did you tell me that? I swear to God. It must have been you. Something's telling me it might be you. All of my life. Restless, restless. Bacterial meningitis, who monster? I don't know. A blood I infection, like, well, there you go. Is it kind of an old man disease? No, it's a blood infection. I think anybody can get it. Why didn't Jeff Beck just not let the old man in? <sighs> right? I mean, he tried to. Okay. During, you'd think during the he looked and I it really is crazy to watch Depp and Beck on that tour, how fresh all that is. The mm -hmm. video footage of them. I mean, it's just a few months ago. And he just passed life is is precious, everyone. It can be taken from you as well as it's given. Carpe diem. Seriously, if that doesn't I mean Jeff, he's 78, but still. That's how that's how that's how fleeting it is. It is crazy. And uh, Jeff, you know, Ballard, and he's 64, but still. Joelle Rich is the daughter of the late Tommy Wildfire Rich, little known fact. See, if it's not Sable, it's going to be professional wrestling with Brendan. 
Do you remember Tommy Wildfire Rich? No, I don't know. Yeah, he's an NWA guy. He, I don't think he ever wrestled in the WWF. Brushes hair. Sarah is all t- is talking like that. Johnny's G talk, Canner's talking about you brushing his hair. I know. Sutton is in South London. Thank you, Ben four eight one zero. Thank you. I'm still catching up on the chat. Before we get to, we're going to get to audio from um, NT from Crazy Days and Nights, who you see posting Howard gossip. All all you stern people that are in here, he they they they're the people responsible for all the Crazy Days and Nights gossip with the the story, and then he releases what is it like two days later, Sarah? He'll say the this he gives you like a a hint, and then you have to guess who it's about, and then he reveals it like the next day or something. I don't know how long it takes. It, it can take months, I think. I thought it was a couple of days later. They, they were trying um, to have you guess. I, I don't know. I'm sure it has been. Josh Foster, that's so funny. He, Josh, by the way, well, welcome, Josh. It's bugging me how much more depth makes me see Mob Deep, who I'm a project, who am I a prodigy over here? Yeah, I can't believe you said that. Mob Deep. When I would see that, it's a it's a rap group, right? And I, it looks like Depp if you look at it really quick. So mm-hmm. every time I would see that, I think it says Depp in it. I can't believe Josh Foster's bringing this up. But then I look at that and I say, is that Donnie Brasco inspired? <laughs> that name? Could it possibly be? By the way, Notorious B.I.G. brings up Donnie Brasco like five different times in five different uh, rap songs. Which is crazy when you think about it, because Depth of City of Lies, which is like a pro B.I.G. movie with Viol- Violetta Wallace and everything. It's it's really crazy how we can connect it. But Donnie Brasco is referenced in many a um, B.I.G. song. Uh, remember that song, the Puff Daddy? He doesn't sing bring up Donnie Brasco, but he's obsessed with the feds. Federal agents mad because I'm flagrant. Tap the cell in my phone in the basement. <laughs> So he says federal agents in that line. Mm-hmm. It's always about getting like the feds are after BIG all the time. Arm, uh, you had Depp knocking on Jeff's hotel room door moment in your life when you drove up the squabble lane that time. You know, I, I did see I was I was feet away from Depp at the um one time at the um uh the, 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 the James Lipton thing, uh, inside the actor studio thing Depp did, which was edited down to 45 minutes when I heard it was three hours long. I couldn't get in because it was for their students, so I waited outside, and he got ushered to a Lincoln Navigator in 2002, and I felt really creepy trying to bash my way in for autographs and stuff, and I just was like, I was screaming um, references of his past to him from Miramar, Florida. Mm-hmm. But I didn't. I didn't get in. I didn't ask for an autograph, and I, I. That was my opportunity, and I just didn't feel. It just felt creepy, asking for. I just didn't. I'm not an autograph person, and I just didn't. I, the humanoids were out there, and the paparazzi was going nuts. He was being ushered from the in the new school. I believe it's on. God damn it! I want to say West 12th Street and Sixth Avenue in Manhattan, and kind of the Flatiron District, just before the. It's, it's wedged between. The East Village and the Flatiron District. Okay. And I waited. This is like 2002, and he, as soon as the thing ended, he got ushered out to a Lincoln Navigator, and uh, you know, chaos ensued. But when you see it there, like it's very creepy to see the autograph thing. I, I just didn't. But I was, you know, I was in the mix, and I was yelling original comments, and he was, he was looking down, graciously signing autographs, being pushed into an SUV, and he's, he's, it was smaller than. I thought like he's probably two inches smaller than me. I'm probably around six feet. So he had to be two inches. He's probably five ten. Okay. And he's he was emaciated. This is this is this is probably heroin depth. Just emaciated. And it looked you can it looked like you could push him down with a um with a thinking of the reference here. A hash pipe. Okay. So you had the phys- he had the it physique just, of Kurt Cobain in yeah, March yeah, of 94. Yes. He looked wobbly and exhausted. I think that thing was a long day because I think the interview is much longer than what they showed you on uh, Bravo at the time. Mm-hmm. So and I heard that when I was talking to people online back then about who were there and they said that they, they deleted the best stuff. The best stuff. He doesn't talk about blow or anything. There's all sorts of shit that he talks about. He talks about turning down Ferris. Not not. 
um, not getting Ferris Bueller. He talks about, um, oh God, what was the other thing? Oh God, there were two huge movies that he was up for that didn't come to fruition that he either turned down or Mechanic. didn't get it. Not Titanic. It wasn't Titanic. It was Ferris Bueller and Back to the Future. Oh, oh, that's okay. And Titanic so was after. And he brought that up there, and they never showed it on uh, on Bravo, which is ridiculous. How could you not show that dirt? Did you go in with your with no pants on and just sit down? I'm sure I was wearing like shorts, <laughs> like big fucking shorts, and something that was like back then. This and then and Brenda, it gets so hot in there, like the because you're moving around so much that you can't wear big clothes. It's just you just sweat, you just sweat. So shorts were very, very, very paramount to what I was. My whole deal. Um, it became see today. I would do such a, uh, I would do those New York walk along videos. Mm -hmm. That would be great because I really knew the spots and I really knew like you could research anybody today. Like I tell Monique all the time, she should do a stern reality tour, walk around, you know, go to Nobu, you go to Howard's apartment, you go to Robin's place on Riverside's drive. It would be such a, I, I don't know why we're not capitalizing on that, but that's what I would do. Sort of Depp ask Depp used to have, a. does anybody remember Man Ray? This is, mm. this is, you see, you see, you, Holly, Holly Rob, do you see, do you, Holly Pop, do you see <laughs> Let's drop what that. you're dealing with here? No. <laughs> Depp used to have a restaurant called Man Ray that he owned with Sean Penn and John Malkovich. <laughs> and it was in like 6th Avenue and 22nd Street. It lasted for a few years and they opened it. It's not around anymore. But I went there during those. I walked in and I was wearing shorts and they wouldn't let me in. And um, see, I would do stuff like that, but it's not around anymore. Man Ray was a it was a big spot for about a year or two in the early 2000s in Manhattan. And he owned it with Sean Penn, who I don't think they're friends anymore. They were friends for five minutes somewhere. And then the two of them used to get brought up like two rebel artists, you know, and um, they're no longer. I, I just feel like they're not friends anymore. I don't have a definitive proof, but I just feel like Sean Penn's made comments about Depp, not kind of kind of what I say about not using his not choosing scripts wisely anymore. And I think that might have gotten back to him. Mm -hmm. like he's saying you know with great power comes great response and so i think Penn has taken shots at depths um just the cash grabs we talk about that that tracy jacobs brings up during the thing and i think that might have gotten back to him but it was malkovich sean penn and depp owned the restaurant together called man ray you ever think maybe you're just on depp's security list and they were worried about you walking in in shorts that you would like pull a Pee Wee herman in a booth no, I think they, just, they, they 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 thought they was like clashing it. They thought it was they had like a dress code. I think. Of course, so yes, I get I, it. It was I'm wearing like high tops and shorts and shit, and it was kind of a weird, pretentious place. Even the name was, and um, you had to be on a guest list. I probably could have like. There's no way Depp could Depp would have worn the sweatshirt I was wearing. I'll remember it was called "I Was a Jack Off in Las Vegas," <laughs> so it's like a card playing joke. Oh. On a sweatshirt. I don't know where that sweatshirt is now, but it was great. <laughs> I was a jack off in Las Vegas, and it shows the hand having a jack in the hand. And that's a sweatshirt I wore to try to get into this place. <laughs> I, I was spontaneous because I didn't know what I was doing that day. So I finally, like, I said, Oh, God, am I by Man Ray? And I went over there and I'm walking in. I don't give a shit what I'm wearing. And that's what I did. <laughs> it wasn't planned, it was very spontaneous. Oh. You should have done push-ups in the booth. Oh, <laughs> went over to a table. That's a great callback. <laughs> Who the fuck is Shell? Um, somebody had a question. About oh, yeah, Judy Tanunu. Welcome, sir. Um, Depp's screen time in Platoon was about a total of three minutes. Yes. Five minutes. Maybe. And That's we have to, on Patreon, we're going to be watching the entire movie for three minutes of Depp's screen time. But the, the documentary on on uh, 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 Amazon, he has a huge role in that. Of course. And so yeah. they stage a platoon re, a platoonian with Depp, uh, Kevin Dillon, 
Um, and a bunch of guys, I, I think Berenger speaks on that. They didn't get everybody, but they got a lot of people from the Platoon movie. And because Depp's easily the biggest star to come out of that movie to this day, it's like not even close. He graciously speaks on the documentary for his buddy, Charlie Sheen. He and Charlie Sheen are good friends. Charlie Sheen got him to do it. They produced it. They had a party afterwards at Depp's house with Kevin Dillon. The Platoon band was Depp on guitar. Corey Glover from Living, remember Living Color, Sarah? The I Black do, yeah. Band? One mm -hmm. of my favorite bands. It's a bridge band to grunge. Mm -hmm. um, he played, he, he was the lead singer and uh, Kevin Dillon was on drums and they played during the filming of the Platoon. They played at the bar they all went to all the time. That's the, the, the great story. And I want to give it away, but too bad. Um, where Depp got so pissed at Oliver Stone's drill sergeant, football coach, um, kind of, you know, get the best out of his actors, you know, technique of just making them suffer. He pissed Depp off so much that Depp, of course, got drunk, climbed up on some scaffolding where Oliver Stone was sitting, drops his pants and goes to golden shower on Oliver Stone. Oh, yeah. Everybody sees him go to do this and they drag him down before the golden shower even <laughs> uh, spritzed onto Stone's cranium. Oh. And they, I guess, I don't know if Stone ever knew about it to this day, but they tell that story in the, uh, in, it's not Depp that tells the story. I think Charlie Sheen does. Mm -hmm. So it's obviously happened. That's, I could totally see it. Like Oliver Stone's such a prick. He can be so prickly, but he, he can be a great director at the time. And he thinks that that technique he uses for his actors is like going to get the best work. You know, like a, like a, like a crazy sports coach. That thinks, you know, being that taskmaster is always going to, like Bobby Knight kind of thing. It doesn't okay. always work. It's not for everybody. And uh, Depp hasn't been in anything Oliver Stone since. So something tells me he just doesn't want He doesn't have the fun. You know how Depp likes to have a good time on set. I don't think that goes on an Oliver Stone set. Would you agree with that? I have never been on an Oliver Stone set. <laughs> But um, he sound he seems like the type to make it a, a very unfun uh, situation. David did the musical score for talk radio with uh, Eric Bogosian. Oh, okay. I don't know if you knew that. He did. I was just familiar with his work on the talkies back in the 20s. I don't want to hit a sensitive topic with you, Sarah. Gungan Dingo's Platoon is one of my favorite movies. I just remember Depp was in one scene. It's really all. I mean, he's, he's in the background a lot, Gungan Dingo. The smoking marijuana partying one night and he plays guitar in the scene and he looks down and he takes a toke from it and looks at it's him and black guys in the scene. So it's the it's the platoon that's a little more down to earth he's in with Charlie Sheen. And that's why his scenes are deleted because he's in Sheen's actual platoon in the movie. There's two factions of the platoon in the movie and they're partying and they sing tracks of my tears in mm -hmm. that scene. He doesn't have a speaking line, but he's in the whole movie and he passes a joint to uh, I think it's Forrest Whitaker or it could be Tony Todd uh, and they sang Tracks of My Tears in unison in that scene but the big scene is him and the Vietnamese girl where he's the interpreter for Tom Berenger goes, oh fuck you learner <laughs> and, he, and Depp sings speaks perfect Vietnamese in the movie to Tom Berenger how did I pull he goes, oh, fuck you, learner. He understands what I'm saying. I love the dichotomy of Depp and Tom Berenger. He's a real actor. Um, what was I saying? Oh, thank you, Judy. Tini. So Judy, Judy watched City of Law. I would have given it to you, Judy. Um, I thought it was really good. I think it's one of I think it might be Depp's best movie since Black Mass. As a matter of fact, I really love that movie. I've seen it five times and I'm due to see it again. Uh, Mob Deep, Quiet Storm, Bomb Ass Song. I will check that out, Crazy Robin. Um, your, rec your recommendations never do me wrong. G Arm Before Night Falls, Depp has a dual cameo um, in that. And he plays a, um, as I've said here before, a transvestite and a kind of Hitler-esque guy with a, sh with a pup tent, with a Depp tent in his pants <laughs> as he caresses his crotch in front of Javier Bardem, and it's two different characters in the movie. He plays a double role for Julian Schnabel in that. Very interesting. Two cat, two cameo appearances in the same movie. How many times did you see that in the theater? Four times. 
Wow. It was it was shown a little more than like um the source was. There was I think it was in a, like a commercial like one commercial theater had it. Mm-hmm. And I shocked one had it. it. Yeah, I was able to see it in that. B.I.G. is from the streets. Puff is from private schools in Shelton. Yes, he is crazy, Robin. B.I.G. is from uh, Clinton Hill slash um, Bedford Stuyvesant, which is one of the worst neighborhoods in all of New York City. My worst, I just mean like a crime rate where it's some of the South Bronx is really bad. I, I got to see an update on the New York neighborhoods now. But back then, I, I was only like a mile and a half away from it in Park Slope. But you know how the city changes like every five feet. I never really, I was, i sure I was over there and didn't know it. Just running through uh, Prospect Park. D- don't know. Don't they know? I know, right, Gina Bobina? Don't they know if you're from the Deppening? Uh, I'm going to get on the Opie again from the Deppening. Um, but yeah, that was that was me, uh, the radio gunk stuff, and someone's imitating me now. And I'm sure it's someone we know um, with my hard-hitting questions. It felt creepy going out on a limb here. It's not the first time Arn has been that close. Well, yeah, Gina, uh, uh, Sarah just told you the Alec Baldwin push-up story, which is a great Alec Baldwin story. In 1991, uh, I'm sorry, 2002 or 2001, same exactly like the, the same time period as the Inside the Actor Studio. Alec was um, the first Inside the Actor Studio thing I ever watched, as a matter of fact. Gina, the ARM fund is for ARM. All net, everything that we I net, didn't... listen, everything that we net goes to ARM. That's um, on this channel and Patreon. That's Sarah's agent negotiations. I didn't even realize um, uh, what the, yeah, I mean, but. Um, I'm the bank and the agent. It's a team effort. It's a team uh, It's for the Patreon uh, to um, fund, I guess, whatever expenses we incur. Is that what you're saying? Um, well, kind of, but um, everything that we make, I'm talking about like whatever fees come out of our platforms, whatever we get after that goes to the arm fund. I was screaming references of his past to him, John. That's terrible. It's excitable fan behavior. Um, yeah, it was, it's funny. Cause I was I, it, going for the obscure reference because everything's, everybody's saying the same shit to him. So I was using names of, uh, bones his childhood friend from Miramar, Florida and stuff like that. I would say just anything obs- Miami Dolphins references. I'd say Jim kick and Larry Zonka and people like that. Uh, so just trying to say something like obscure as that would be. But again, um, I, it was so there was no chance he was going to and just mobbed, absolutely mobbed. And he was rushed into this Lincoln navigator waiting for him. As they zipped off to the East Village, probably he's a he's an East Village fixture too. By the way, mm-hmm. Depp. Not, I mean, he lived in New York, I think, briefly in the early '90s with Winona Ryder. There's a guy and Kate Moss. There's a at the same time, and there's a guy. There's a writer who exclusively covered them, who I, I might have on to interview about those days of uh, Depp and Kate Moss in in the early '90s. Okay. In the East Village. <laughs> Davi goes, can I borrow that jack-off sweatshirt for the honorable reasons when I go to Las Vegas? They probably still sell it, David. There, I bet. I bet it's like a staple. I, I feel like I popularized it. Put it on the map. Okay, so here we go. I am go- J- Johnny Drama, Kevin Dillon. Yes, G Canada. That guy is such a bad actor. He does the same thing every time, Kevin Dillon. He's like a, you know, Matt Dillon light. And when he did Entourage, who I feel... The Johnny drama story is very similar to Amber Heard's story, oddly enough. Amber Heard is the female Johnny drama. If you ever watch Entourage, just think about Amber Heard's story and her circle and her, you know, she's playing Mira for Christ's sake. He plays Aquaman in Entourage. It's really crazy. Mm -hmm. If you watch, just binge watch Entourage and think of Amber Heard. They use Depp as a template. It's based on Marky Mark's life initially. And then they start grabbing things from other actors and using it. I remember Malcolm McDowell talking to uh, Sloan in a scene, and she goes, "He goes, uh, he's talking to, I think it was Kevin Connolly, and Malcolm McDowell sister uh, Kevin Connolly. Goes, you know, Eric Sloan can call it. I remember Sloan saw a young Johnny Depp in Platoon." 
and he's only in the movie for three minutes. And she turns to me and she says, Dad, that guy is going to be a big star. And uh, I think it was pretty cool to reference Platoon because he's only in it in a cameo appearance. But that's a real scene from Entourage. Depp fans on the internet try to decide whether Depp did it arm. Um, Depp did what? What am I missing there? What is, what's, I don't what's Judy know. talking about here? I don't Depp's know. Talking. Ben4810, Robin, Crazy Robin, her record label put a lot of money into her in the UK. She even sang on the band uh, Band Aid Xmas single, but they never got any solo success. Okay, let me tell me Vanessa or Sergeant Barnes, right, right. Barnes! Barnes! That's Willem Dafoe screaming at uh... Sarah, you want to make it on your own steam? Speaking of Forrest Whitaker, Godfather of Harlem is pretty good. I saw that, G Cannon. I'm going to check that out. It looks good to me. That is on my must-watch list. Love Tom Berenger and someone to watch over me, says Crazy Robin. Do you ever see that? Sarah? No. Sounds like a Sarah movie. No. No. Do that. Say no again. Let's get to the, the good stuff. Say no. I want you to say no again. <sighs> no, I'm not going to say no. <laughs> you Liz Cheney and your strained, passive-aggressive person. We have a lot to do. Let's go. We don't have a lot to do. Yes, We're we playing do. one 50 minute video of audio that we have to pause frequently. Let's you go. For snickety taskmaster, you. <sighs> uh, Sariana Huffington, I should say. Mm -hmm. Okay, here's Crazy Days and Nights. Crazy, crazy, crazy Johnny Depp gossip from NT. He's very monotone. He's very low talking, so I tried to enhance his, this volume. Um, bear with me. I'm going to try to punch it up as this guy speaks. Now, um, trigger warning. There might be some negativity here. Oh, there's a ton of negativity. I know. We're going to try to refute some of it. Some of it may be true. I'm actually amazed when I was breezing through this. I'm amazed at what this guy knew because he really knows the biography. Like, I thought, oh, it's just some novice. He's going to get facts wrong. He knows about Lori Allison. He knows about Cheryl and Finn. He knows, you know, so, I mean, like, that people know that stuff. But he has his, he, not saying he has his receipts. I'm not saying that. But he definitely has a history. And it clearly, he has an axe to grind with Depp. It's pretty crazy. Mm-hmm. Everybody. Welcome to another episode of the podcast. The voice doesn't get much more dynamic than what you're listening to. So bear with me. There's a lot of information here. He's, he's a low talking kind of monotone, which makes me proud to have my Long Island loudmouth accent. <laughs> Glad you were long today. Um, I don't know why I, I haven't done this person in the first couple months of the the blog, I mean, not the blog, the podcast. Um, so I figured tonight uh, was the first, it was a good time. Um, I'm talking about Johnny Depp. You know, a lot, when I first started the, the website, I mean, Johnny Depp could do no wrong in the eyes of most of the readers. They're now, he's got a point there, right? Depp is very sacrosanct, very beloved. With the Depp heads and the Deptford wads, there's a very large set. Even even the Holly Pops of the world will admit he can do no wrong to so many different people. He's right about that, and that's fine. Um, so we'll give him that. We'll give him that. Um, Brendan goes, "I don't want you to tell me what it's like to be punched." <laughs> <laughs> it's your favorite, Crazy Robin. Put me put to sleep type of voice. Perfect voice to go to sleep to. Night night. Crazy, right? It is. It is definitely fucking soporific. There are many days um, where people would request like photos of Johnny, and you could just do a whole selection of photos of Johnny for a post. That's when I did a, a lot more photos and random photos, and they would always request Johnny Depp. You know, because he's gorgeous. This was a, you know, the Pirates of the Caribbean kind of peak of fame thing, mm. where it just kind of overwhelms almost everything. But the thing is, is that even prior... Now, he said whispering, too. He's kind of going, ah, 
He's like me doing the 90210 episode. I'm like, oh, I don't think you're that low. Brenda is a... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but the thing is... Uh, um, and it's, it's, it, it, but it's as if he's a vo- someone in the, in the other room that he doesn't want them to hear. Right? I mean... It seems that way. I don't affected. know. Affected. Ashley Olsen seems like she would be in on this type. David C. writes, yeah, Sarah knows there's an, there's, there's an Ashley Olsen and Depp connection, which I didn't really even know about until um, a few years ago. And Sarah one knows the more Olsen, about this than I One did. of the Olsen twins allegedly... I have have been having to say a lot of allegedly's today after my Reddit stint. I'll get into some other time. Uh, we... There were rumors after Heath Ledger died that one of the Olsen twins, and I get them mixed up. I don't know one from the other, but they were a supplier, let's say, allegedly. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> that might Ashley, be Depp's connection. I don't know. Ashley Olsen dated Heath Ledger, right? I don't know. See, I, it could be Mary Kate. I don't know. One Somebody... of them earned, One of them owned the apartment he died in. And so there's like sightings of him leaving her apartment mm-hmm. often, supposedly, allegedly. And I just had no idea what I know Depp's a huge full house fan. I mean, who he loves Dave Coulier's Popeye voice. Yeah. That has to be part of it. It's gotta be at least be part of it. Whatever happened to predictability. Oh no, here you go. <laughs> I mean, even prior to that, he was he was a really not a nice person. He wasn't a nice person during Pirates. <sighs> I don't think that he's ever been nice, but he <laughs> could control. Now, when you say that, immediately axe to grind turns Yeah, up. exactly. He's, he is the menchiest of A-list stars by all accounts. And his not nice is you're not I mean, Give us. Okay. He's going to tell us why he thinks this, but not nice is just so ambiguous. Well, the image to a certain extent where um, it didn't really affect him uh, publicly like it has over the last couple of years. Basically, ever since he left Vanessa and then it's just been downhill. Again, Vanessa, <laughs> G Canada goes much like Johnny's bank account. It's been downhill since Pirates. <laughs> So there's another sacrosanct Vanessa parody comment, even by Enti, for Christ's mm-hmm. sake. Even well, and, he. and it has been downhill ever since he loved Vanessa. Look what happened after Vanessa. In a lot of ways, artistically, socially, right? That's not wrong. It's not wrong. What positive personally city of lies? No, I'm not even not as I'm not just as movies. What was going about, on in Penthouse Three? Yes, and socially, or, or artistically, it, he's not wrong there. It's just that it's so he states it with such a hateful tinge to his voice that it leads you to believe there's something go, else going on here. I mm-hmm. don't know what this guy's who his who his his mole is, but he's got that. That's the whole point of this. He has many moles. And, the problem uh, with a site like this is, especially when you do a blind item, you can say whatever you want about whoever you want. A lot of these, they don't even reveal who they're about. Those ones, I would almost guarantee, they just make them up. Uh, crazy job goes, Olsen twin, drug dealers, heroin, that is. Oh, is that confirmed? Uh, nope, nothing's confirmed. It's all <laughs> alleged. And this is transformative content, right, Sarah? Yes, it's fair use all day long. Yeah. And ever since he uh, got with Amber, it just accelerated downhill. Ever since he, you know, started hooking up again with Marilyn Manson, it accelerated downhill. Right, Gita. Definitive. He's so definitive in this. We already knew that drinking and Johnny Depp don't really go well together. When you do the drinking and the self-medicating... See, I'll push back on that. As a drinking coach, I get very offended. I get very annoyed when people lump alcohol in with MDMA and heroin and cocaine and all these crazy drugs. It's not the alcohol's fault. Okay? It's not the al- it's never the alcohol's fault. Do not lump drugs in, in with with my precious booze. Do not do that. 
We've all we've heard the Constitution that Depp has from all the people that hang with him. Drinking is not his issue. I don't believe it's like an Artie Lang's issue either. It's the other shit. If you want to call it a gateway drug, I don't even know if I'd buy that in Depp's case. But drinking is not his problem. The intervention Tracy Jacobs staged for him in 1994 at her place was about drugs. It wasn't about it wasn't about Corona light on the set of The Brave, <laughs> popping a lime wedge in there, slam dunking a lime wedge. It's about drugs. Don't lump drugs in with alcohol. He's got a great tolerance. It's a perpetual buzz and constitution. Uh, so as a drinking coach, I'm pushing back on that already. And Johnny Depp and his temper issues and all that, things are going to spiral out of control. <sighs> now, in this first part of two, probably, um, I'm going to go basically from the beginning of his career. You see what I mean with the one man podcast, how you have to have somebody else to bounce off, especially in this case, someone with energy of some kind. This is what I'm talking about with the one man pod, how I can't deal with the one man podcast mm -hmm. career to about 1999 or 2000. And then in tomorrow's part, we'll go from 2000 all the way up through the current day. So you see what I mean, Sarah? It's biographical. It's like it's it's a timeline. Yes. So it's kind of organized. I'll give them that. I will give them that. And the reason will become apparent later on why I'm cutting it off at, at the year 2000. Because <laughs> I want both sides to be it, my next client. I'm going bookended to by a murder. Like delicious Canadian alcohol. Um, so that will all become apparent. It's amazing when you look at everything and the celebrities and there's so much death and a lot of it I think has to do with the fact that there is so much drugs and so much drinking and people are so young and they just take it so casually and the next thing you know somebody's dead Gina speaking of drinking and uh, she goes I may take a, the ugly gag in the face after you take a sip Sarah is just like you you're in what I call the yummy phase where it, alcohol is not yummy so you you like you, you are a foodie. You like the taste of things. You like sweets and desserts. And alcohol is not for those people for the most part. Right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. you, are, you, are, you are yummy, right? You are someone who's in the yummy phase. Alcohol is disgusting. Coffee is disgusting. Yes, yes, Kiss right. Pe yes, yes. People who are in the yummy don't, the yummies don't like coffee. Like straight black coffee like I drink. But... You know, ever since Johnny burst onto the scene back in, well, the film came out in 1984. It was the movie Nightmare on Elm Street. And, uh, you know, it was a pretty, it was a pretty decent role for a first role. I think any time that you can, you know, get that horror movie to be your first role, you got a chance because you kind of get a fan base right away. And there's just that certain base for fan, you know, of horror movies. Kevin Bacon, you know, his first movie was Friday the 13th. You know, so you, you Jamie Lee Curtis and things like that. It, it, you just, if you get that horror film fan base, it can really keep you going. And G Canada writes, Arm, you're insane. A British, him and his British studies, you know, Sarah, G Canada. 2012 determines alcohol is way worse than heroin, three times worse than cocaine. Alcohol kills more people than other drugs combined every year. Because they don't know how to drink G Canada because it's more accessible and available per person. It's not even close. You got to do it. You got to do the percentages. It's got to be like the efficiency and you have to learn. And that's where the drinking coach thing comes into play. It's because it's mainstream and alcohol is so readily available. But if you did it per person, it's not even close. And by the way, who's reporting on drugs? You're not going to admit you did this stuff. Right. And the whole point of drugs is that no one knows about it. I don't even know how to buy marijuana. So how are you going to get determined? How are you going to get firm statistics if you don't even know who the drug dealers are? It's not even close. And that's where the drinking coach comes into play. And if something happens to your career, you can always go do comic cons for the rest of your life. You know, there haven't been really many points since. You know, Nightmare on Elm Street, basically. Because that soon led to, you know, 21 Jump Street. But there haven't been many, many times between then and now that he hasn't been in kind of that A-list range. He's right about that. 
Now, he kind of knows his stuff to some degree. What I will say this is interesting what he said. He says that if De- if nothing happened to Depp after Nightmare on Elm Street, that he would just do conventions for the rest of his life. Like horror yeah, conventions, yeah, maybe. Comic-Con and stuff. Mm-hmm. Like He's basically saying that he'd be a male Heather Langenkamp who played Nancy. Mm-hmm. That that somehow that could sustain like in the eighties that shit wasn't around there was no horror conventions in nineteen eighty five right you that stuff didn't come along until later all Maybe. the comic cons and stuff but he wouldn't he's saying that that would that's that's his fate and he's crediting Nicolas Cage for doing the legwork for him to get him you know crowbar him into Nightmare on Elm Street. And you know how the story goes, where he auditioned in front of Wes Craven's daughter and yes. said that he he's supposed to be playing like a blonde jock. Like a Ted McGinley was like who they wrote that part for. I'm not saying it was Ted McGinley specifically, but that's the look. The prototypical, you know, jock. Like he looked like in Revenge of the Nerds. And then Depp, it was kind of a left turn. And he stood out to Wes Craven's daughters. And that's supposedly how, but he certainly got the audition because of Nicolas Cage. Thank you, David. I get so depressed with one person podcast. I feel like when I'm listening to someone's last will and testament on them. So true. Thank you, Debbie. That's I, who could put it better than you. You know, obviously when his first movie was an A-list, but it happened really pretty quickly. You know, if you, and pretty much ever since then, he's had a ton of scandals, but the problem is, is over time and, just people forget and there was a narrative and now every time I use that word, all I can think about is Bethany going narrative, narrative, narrative. Um, what's he talking about there? I don't know. Did he mention the Bethany from, uh, housewives? I don't know. It sounds like I agree with him on that too. I think the word narrative is overused as fuck and I'm guilty of it as anybody is. If that's what they're making fun of, I, Assume that's what it, I, I, we overuse that. That is so beat to death. Gaslight and narrative. So I have to find a new word. Yeah. But that's basically the, the, the scandals and everything have kind of just gone by the wayside. They've kind of disappeared. And I thought because of what he's going through over these, the last couple of years, that it's important for everybody to not just think that they sprung up out of the blue. I actually, I mean, th- th- they've been here. We just, I threw up uh, Crazy Robin on Wellbutrin and uh, rum uh, a couple months ago. That's true. Sometimes you can, but there's a there's a there's a there's a skill to that. And I got sloppy. And now that's how you. I mean, that's how you become the drinking coach. You learn from those those incidents like that. I'll never do it again. And now I can teach that to people. 150 milligrams of Wellbutrin does not go with um, a rum and Pepsi Max, Jack Max kind of forgotten about him. Um, how did this actor who had really done nothing <laughs> get all of a sudden get this pretty decent part in Nightmare on Elm Street? Crazy Rob, a straight black arm and I'll provide the sugar. I love my coffee like my women. Cold and black. Right, Sarah? Iced, cold and black. Whatever gets you through the night. Well, his first wife, um, Lori Allison, it's yeah. basically, you know, thanks to her. And a lot of people forget that he was married back in the day. And um, he was to, to a, a... You're getting a lot of negativity about coffee, Sarah. Well, get over it. Gunga Din <laughs> says, disgusting, Sarah. You break my heart. Zap says... I will never that, apologize. I agree with Zap. Like, I get headaches if I don't have enough caffeine. You take like, a caffeine pill like oh, I do. Oh, please. I, it's, the, it's, like the, it's, the, it's the optics of drinking the coffee, I think, that also sucks. Put your pinky out? No, I don't have the pinky out. What am I, yes, some kind do. of fruit basket? Who am I, Jim J. Bullock over here? <laughs> it just, I can't, I get headaches if I don't have proper caffeine. And that's probably a fly, but I'm, I'm a, I'm, it's an addiction. And, um, I feel I don't like being in a soporific state. I, I'd rather be anxiety ridden than sleepy. Make a partisan named Lori. And she was very good friends with Nicolas Cage. Who, as we all know, is really Nicholas, Nicholas Coppola. So he's right so far. Um, this, is, this, this checks, he, you know, it was a good person to know. And Nicholas Lori made a- some calls. And the next thing you know, Johnny's got nine. 
Royale's in his depths first wife, who's a makeup artist. Um, he's also the sister in law to Bruce Whitkin, who Sarah posted a video of his comp in the trial, uh, who was his best friend from Miramar and played in his band, The Kids. And yes. that's how that got set. Lori Allison is also three years older than that. Something like that. Or five, mm -hmm. Is it five years? I don't think it's five. Five years. I think it's five because he got married at 20 right. and she was 25. He was married at 20 years old. There's actually wedding pictures uh, you can find where he's eating cake and stuff. Somewhere on Elm Street. And you would think that Johnny would be extremely grateful to his wife for, you know, making that connection. And because of that connection, basically everything... Yes, David, he's saying Depp is a fluke. If you get that horror movie fan base, Depp isn't a horror icon. He used an opportunity for exposure to do more varied artistic work later on. Is he saying Depp is a fluke? Yeah, he's... I mean, it's... What, what is luck, right, Sarah? It's um, opportun opportunity meets luck or something like that. Like you take... Depp will be the first to admit. He goes... You know, if someone hands me the ball, I'm going to run with it. I'm going to do what I can do um, until I get tackled. So it's like, I, I, I'm, tr I'm trying to remember how that goes. It goes, opportunity meets luck or something. Luck isn't, I, I, I forget how it goes. Success is opportunity meets luck or something like that. Like who wouldn't capitalize on that at that point? That's so you got to get your start some way. Mm -hmm. He's not from nepotism. We know that. Lily Rose is. He's not. At least, see, that's one thing. I mean, he lived a real life before he got his first role. So he he's not like these kid at that Hollywood Brat Pack are all nepotism cases. He's not. Nicolas Cage, his fucking last name's Coppola, for Christ's sake. And he cha changed, you know, Luke Cage, the superhero, is what he changed it to. That Johnny that was achieved since, you know, it's because of that connection that the first wife made with Nicolas Cage. True. But... He knows his shit, I gotta How say. did he repay her? Well, on the set, he did it by hooking up with as many women as possible. <laughs> he was kind of referred to him, himself as the nightmare on Elm Street. <laughs> a nightmare on Elm Street set. Um, and they had... This is the only time I've ever heard that. This is the only time I've ever heard this. So he's saying that he hooked up with Heather Langenkamp, um, <laughs> Tina, mm -hmm. um... Every PA, every direct in in the in the in the couple weeks they had to ramshackle shoot this movie, he somehow had sex with everybody on the the set. Mm -hmm. Now, he, I, could he have hooked up with people? Now he's saying that he he cheated on his first wife in this movie with Heather Langenkamp. It's kind of what he's implying. He's not naming her, but who else could it possibly have been? Right? Yeah, I, I can't Nancy. think of. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe. Some other jokes for him, too. Um, I mean, he just <laughs> would not stop hitting on everybody <laughs> on that movie. And it just kind of. Just the way he's the, the proclaims that is funny. He, he would not stop hitting on anything. That moved in that movie, like Gina Bobina said, it's so he's so definitive with it. Like he's just like I said, this guy posts a lot of gossips. True, by the way, he'll post stuff and it ends up being true. So I'm sure some of it's fake, but you could he could have sources of people who just hate other people and they're reporting to him fake shit. He just takes it as gospel. But he's Gina said the perfect word. He's so definitive in how he's proclaims. It. Set the tone, really for you know how he is and how he has always been you know he he was che he cheated on his wife from 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 the get-go from <laughs> the jump and even though she's the one he missed an opportunity to say from the jump street right there by the way it bothers <laughs> me to this day i don't even think he knows about that he does he does he makes a he makes a pun later i think who set him up with the thing but the the final straw for for Depp's first wife was um, when she caught him in bed with uh, Thank you, Sherilyn Brad. Fenn, who was um, okay. Now does this make sense to you, Sarah? He's saying he cheated with Sherilyn Fenn, 
who we talk about all the time. She was in Jump Street. They had the the the, the commercial we played, and he's Cheryl and Finn on his helmet, no pun intended, um, on Platoon. By the way, G- Judy Tanuna, if you get a zoom in on Depp's helmet, again, no pun intended. I mean the one on his head. It says Cheryl in on his his Platoon helmet. And that's Cheryl and Finn. So all the guys in Platoon wrote homages to people in their life. And Auntie is saying that Depp cheated on Lori Allison with Cheryl and Finn. Mm-hmm. Does that track to you, Sarah? No, I, can, I don't know. He's got the names right and the timelines right. I'm it's not, not saying, hard to find those names. I know. You'd have to get you'd have to get um Lori Allison to sign off on this. Mm-hmm. Like John Collins going. It just reads like an unauthorized biography I would have bought in you know 1994. That's a good comparison. It's very similar to someone writing like a Paul Colford or someone. There's a, there's a great Seinfeld um, uh, unauthorized biography. It's better than the, his book. They, sometimes they're more factual because the guy who's writing a biography about himself autobiography is going to embellish himself to make himself look great isn't he so the dude who isn't is probably going to be more honest than the actual guy who writes his own biography Mm -hmm. like john collins right at a horror convention in middle school (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) i don't know if she was that's pretty close to when sherilyn hit her peak i would say late 80s early 90s i mean not just twin peaks but those Ah, soft. i call them soft porn you know, they just basically. No, he's right. Remember Two Moon Junction? No. It's kind of like a soft core porn movie Cheryl and Fenn was in, but it was like slightly like a thinking man soft core porn, if there is such a thing. Two Moon Junction. I don't know if anyone has ever seen that. Um, hi, JC. We've been waiting for you and talking about you the whole time. Welcome to the Deppening family, JC. Movies that were wrapped around um, a basis for her to get naked three times in them. It was the whole, I, it was more of, I call it the whole nine and a half weeks cycle yeah, where every movie kind of had to try and look like nine and a half weeks and replicate it. It's true. And if you did it well, then you've got a, a studio movie. And if you did it poorly, you were on Cinemax. <laughs> I know. I know Cinemax very um, well. 1995, three o'clock in the morning, coming home from drinking. Is there anything better than Shannon Tweed dry humping Andrew Stevens? Is there, Sarah? <laughs> but basically, and then Sherilyn put up with a whole bunch of crap and a whole bunch of women. Um, and she left him when he was hooking up with Jennifer Gray. So basically, you just have a guy that's just showing no He's got loyalty the names whatsoever. Right. And uh, you know, it's it's he's young into his fame, and he is definitely taking advantage of that fame. At this point in time, when this is all happening, there's no social media, there's no internet. Okay, Sarah, we know the Jennifer Gray story thanks to Johnny Bye Bye and his link to the book very well. Um, there's Rodney. Welcome, sir. Male vocal fry. Yes, yes, yes. Low energy male vocal fry. I'm out. Call me when you do kit reads of the ver <laughs> I should I should have like uh transcripted this and then read it as uh as Feeney. But I'm all right. You just gotta you just gotta you gotta adjust. I'll 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 stop it repeatedly so you don't have to subject you to more than a minute or two of this guy. But there's a lot of facts in here. Um so Sarah, the Jennifer Gray story as it goes. Can you um Give us how, tell everybody how that went down. We all know that I know it, but tell us how it went down. Um, Tracy Jacobs. Tracy Jacobs. Yeah, Tracy Jacobs used her to get to Depp. Tracy Jacobs represented Jennifer Gray. And in doing so, she became smitten with Depp on Jump Street and looked at him and said, I can turn this guy into a huge movie star. How do I do that? I'm going to pimp out my actress to him and, and hook them up. And I will eventually represent Depp from Jennifer Gray. So one day they're hanging out. Tracy Jacobs calls Jennifer Gray and basically tells her to hand the phone off to Depp and doesn't even speak to her. And she's like, "Uh oh, this is where it's going. And she she marginalized Jennifer Gray. The two of them dated um, for about a year and a half in the late 80s. Jennifer Gray broke up with him. He didn't dump her. She dumped him. So he's implying that 
he cheated on Jennifer Grey, and which that had not been confirmed by her in the book, but it was Jennifer Grey that dumped Depp. I ladies. don't know that she would have left that out had, if he had cheated. I don't think so either. She was spilling on everything else. Um, so that's how that goes. And um, the, the separation anxiety of, you know, he's the long distance relationship and she's there's a bunch of factors that went into it. But it was not uh, as far as we know. She did not uh, can, any cheating whatsoever in the book, but it. It's possible she didn't want to say, but I think Sarah's right. She would have said so had it happened. There's only the tabloids. And frankly, in the mid eighties, um, which is when this was all occurring, you know, he wasn't really ta tabloid material. The people yes, at that time that were reading like the, the national Enquirer, they weren't really into Johnny Depp. That was the whole Burt Reynolds. That's not true at all. Um, every issue of Us magazine I ever picked up had some gossip on him, even when he wasn't doing a film. I remember the early 90s. It would show him at premieres of um, – um, uh, what's the, 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 the Cameron Crowe movie, Sarah? The, the grunge movie, early 80s. Um, Almost Famous. Or, no, no, no. Early 90s. Uh, um, singles. Singles, singles. Depp is at the singles premiere, and you know, I, think he, I, think he, I think he auditioned for that movie and didn't get it. And, um, Thank God. Well, I mean, don't you like singles? I like the movie. I don't want him playing Matt Damon or yeah, Matt Dylan. Damon's character. Matt Dylan. Matt Dylan, whatever. <laughs> Campbell, would you rather have him play Campbell Scott? Um, Dare to do you? The do you know what would happen if Xavier McDaniel two of Depp. your worlds collided? I know. With I know. Depp talking about Xavier McDaniel, and that, that would scene. have been incredible. <laughs> oh my god. God, I could spank it just thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, that would have been position. Fat City for you. Oh, my God. <laughs> he goes, uh, Steve, don't come yet. <laughs> Xavier McDaniel, the great tweener, small forward um, enforcer of the Seattle Supersonics, has a great cameo in singles. And uh, Campbell Scott has a couple of lines talking about McDaniel. And uh, Kyra Cedric takes a shot at him, too, in the car, right, Kira. when they're driving. She's Kira. Xavier McDaniel. Xavier McDaniel is he a is he a basketball player or a or a boxer? What is he's a goon? Yeah. She goes dare to dish the X Man. <laughs> There's a great uh, 90210 reference by Gunga Din for you, Sarah. Nicholas Cage worked on the Blaze with Brandon Walsh. Well, it is a paper a lot of parents read. <laughs> um, and then how dare you? The Zook worked on the Blaze with Brandon. The Zook. <laughs> the Zook. Angry as Andrea Zuckerman. Thank you, Zap. I will try to do it later if my voice keeps up. Oh, God. He goes, that's the news, and I am out of here. Who am I, Gunga Jen over here? All those Lonnie Anderson kind of things, and um, when they were still putting Elvis was alive. Um, so you really didn't... The only people that would have written anything bad, uh, their readers weren't interested... And magazines that were around, like people. And I should say too, De Zep, before I. De Dennis Miller does a 21 Jump Street joke to start the 89 season of Saturday Night Live, where it's a very famous thing where it shows Depp and Greco. And that summer, Sarah, you remember this? They were inundating you with Greco coming on Jump Street, and they were showing the two of them in these very homoerotic commercials as voiced by Optimus Prime, Peter Cullen, mm -hmm. this week on 21 Jump Street, Hanson meets his new partner. And they There's one shot in one of those promos where they, they zoom in on Grieco's crotch. It's like, okay. <laughs> and it's just like, Dep, Grieco, Dep, Grieco. And then Dennis Miller started his joke. Goes, Dep, Grieco, Grieco, Dep, Dep and Grieco. He goes, he goes, I'm the furthest thing from gay. But these two kids are hot. <laughs> and it's the Bruce. I have the whole episode. It's the Bruce Willis hosted Saturday Night Live from the 89 season. Weekend update. Us, when did us start? Pretty close to around there. I mean, they were just, the, they were the same, you know, knee padding tabloids that they've always been. So they're not going to write about him cheating and everything like that. It would be up to just the, the gossip columns in the papers, basically. To call him out on it, just in New York and LA, the trades aren't going to do it. So he pretty much just 
got away with it. And I think that as he got away with it, it just was more and more emboldened. Thank you, Ben, 4810. Thank you, sir. That's really kind of you One of the say. things that the tabloids decided to blow off, and this is where the story often gets changed, is because there were so few kind of Hollywood gossip outlets. Okay, David, I can't ignore this great joke of yours. He goes, ha, ha, He goes, how about Depp hitting on Robert Robert England in full Freddy makeup, having a tryst in East L.A. prison boiler room? I didn't Maybe. even consider. Yeah, I didn't even consider it was Robert England who he hit on. Why do you think uh, Nancy's mom was so exasperated all the time in her <laughs> in her scenes? Depp was banging her. In did between. anybody? Yeah, did anybody play drunk, tired better than Nancy's mom in the yeah. kitchen during that scene? Nancy, oh, <laughs> she's still coming down from the big O. Depp gave her. I'm very proud of the watch along we did with David on Nightmare on Elm Street One. That's good. That was very it's good. It's good. It was really good. I think it was the first. It's good. It's good. It's good. I think it's the first one we did. I think we did it before Jump Street. Well, we crashed and burned with the um, the the first attempt we made with a movie watch along. So I think we redeemed ourselves with Nightmare on Elm Street. No, that came out. Uh, yeah, I know what you're saying. That came out good though. We had to make, we had to turn it into like a slideshow because it got blocked. That's what made us go to Patreon. She's talking about the 21 jump street. No, Christmas I'm not. I'm episode. talking about city of lies that we tried. Oh yeah. That was worse. Yeah. That was Lasted that had to five go, minutes. Right. We got to get back to that. We I can do I, it now with crazy Robin sitting there. Um, could you match? So maybe it is him Depp hitting on Robert England's the funniest thing I ever heard. <laughs> That's what you say to I'm gonna we'll write Enti and tell him I didn't know Depp hit I, I didn't know Depp had sex with Robert England on the set of Nightmare on Elm Street. This was so no. long ago I don't think Enti uh, remembers anything that he made up for this. <laughs> Gina Bobina remembers it. That's for sure. Twin Peaks TV show. I've never seen. Have you ever seen Twin Peaks, Sarah? No, oh, I, sorry, I avoided it purposely. Because you know how, like, what a hoop head I was, especially during those years. I say was, but I was worse in those years. I have a theory. The reason I didn't watch Twin Peaks is that it was a, it was on on a Friday night against the NBA, and I did nothing but watch the NBA in those years. Mm-hmm. And I think that I probably missed every episode of Twin Peaks. Be- and I, I don't know for a fact, but if anybody remembers, I'm guessing Twin Peaks was on a Friday night because I would have never seen I, it. I couldn't tell you. That were considered to be believed that you could pretty much get away with with anything. If you had the right team behind you, which he did. I mean, Sherilyn kicked him out for for being with Jennifer. But I don't think that what she didn't know and that what. Now that's possible. So now he's accusing Depp of cheating on Cheryl and Fenn with Jennifer Grey. Now that's pot because that timeline makes sense. That They're could, right on yeah. the heels. That could be. That could definitely be. And I think Tracy Jacobs is to blame for that, which he doesn't have here. That's, you know, because he dated both Jennifer Grey and Cheryl and Fenn during 21 Jump Street. Jennifer Grey was actually on the Jump Street set a few times, mm-hmm. back and forth after uh, Dirty Dancing, and that's the height of her. So, and Sherilyn Finn's in an actual episode of Twenty One Jump Street in season one, which we went over with um, A Smith, the first appearance of the McQuaid brothers, and the first appearance of um, Blowfish. Thanks, David. <laughs> oh, t- oh, God. G. Cannon and t- t- testicular providence. He caught that. Remember, David, he was talking about how G. Canada should change his name to testicular providence. He loves that phraseology. That's such a great callback. Oh, I love, I love the simpatico you two have, G. Cannon and David, from the testicular providence provincial uh, relationship you have. Thank you, Gunga Dan. Arm, I'm really impressed with your depth history. Yeah, it's, it's just psychotic uh, savant. It's just, we all have our little monkey tricks, and that's mine. You know, we all have the one thing we're savants with. Right? Everyone's got the one or two things, right? Like you, Sarah, and gossip from the 80s. Old broad, <laughs> old broad gossip. Elvis knowledge. I still remember Elizabeth Taylor articles in the Inquirer and Larry Fortensky. 
Who am I, Larry Fortensky over here? You don't here? even know who that is, do you? I th here's what I, here's what I think I okay. Let's see if I can get. By the way, did you know Depp knows who he, he knew Elizabeth Taylor for a little while? Everybody knew Elizabeth. Taylor. He had lunch with her and um, Steve Martin and Billy Bob. Th I can't believe Billy Bob Thornton and him were in the same uh, lunch when you cut to what we know now. Mm -hmm. But the, he was like he old Hollywood and <sighs> here's what I think, Larry Fortensky. Because I remember being annoyed hearing this reference, and I don't know a lot about old Hollywood like you do, you and your old broads. I'm more of a newer Hollywood person. And um, Larry Fortensky apparently is like a regular guy that she dated who was a construction worker. Is that right? Yes. Nice oh, job. I'm right. Okay. Okay. That was her eighth husband. People would use that as a punchline. And it annoyed me so much that I had to look up who he was. Mm -hmm. It was a joke. It was a constant monologue joke. Larry Fortensky was the kind of the, the symbol of you're not worthy of Hollywood royalty civilian name. Right. Yeah. All right. So he was like a const an actual construction worker right? who dated or married to Elizabeth. Married Taylor? Elizabeth Taylor. Okay. Yes. Michael Jackson was the best man. Uh, Jennifer didn't know is that he had been with Winona Ryder. Now, everybody knows about Johnny Depp and Winona Ryder. I mean, Winona Forever, now it's Wino Forever. I mean, everybody knows that part. But the timeline that was so carefully constructed by the tabloids and Why studios and PR people off? is they would have you believe that... And Sorry, he's gasping every phrase. It's almost like he's nervous to deliver this because of the. That's just what he does. That's his delivery. Does he always say? Because you, you're yes, actually the reason we found out about this, and you subscribed to him, and that's how we got this. Yes. And so I said we got to download ago. it and keep it, and I saved it on ten different hard drives. No one's going to believe it if we say this, and um, he sounds like this every. He's like yes, gasping he every phrase. He's oxygen. Again, back then, there was nobody to correct them. There wasn't social media. You're not going to see a picture, you know, of of the two of them together at, at some That's restaurant that and then it's posted to social media. So it was really easy. If you just stayed hidden, nobody was going to take your picture. No Thank you, Gunga Din. Yeah, I, I'm not a whore for likes or whatever, but click that like button. It can't, it can't hurt. It's just a little effort. Scroll down and hit it. Right, Sarah? Mm -hmm. You like saying that. Thank you, Gunga Den. Thank you for reminding me of the like and subscribe thing. I always forget to say that. I feel uncomfortable saying it, but I actually genuinely forget. To you say need it. to stop being uncomfortable saying it. I have imposter complex. You I know. know. That's why I'm the one who scrounges for arm fun. Because <laughs> you refuse. Nobody was going to find you out. Your Pretty timelines were safe. But the, the official story that they all would have you believe is that um, the Jerry Lee Lewis movie, and now it's going to escape me. Great Balls of Fire. Do you know that's the Winona Ryder? What else could it be called? Come on, dude. What? He, well, that's what, that's the Winona Ryder yes, classic hookup story, right? Mm -hmm. So the, back then, you didn't know the timeline. It was really tough. To, I always was like, what? How? Um, Crazy Robin goes, you got a fine-ass actor running through broads. That's what he's supposed to do. <laughs> this guy's damn jealous, transparent much. That's pretty good, Crazy Robin. I um I want I want to see I want to see how hard he goes after like a DiCaprio in this. You know, I wonder how much how much do we know about him? You know, you know about the the gay accusations with the cat that all this is like bearded. This is like a, a guy's impression of what a heterosexual would do, and he's gay and these these women are hired beards. Mm -hmm. That's a theory that's running very strong these days because he looks so homoerotic. If you see him prancing around and gallivanting and frolicking with Lucas Haas at the beach and he's got a really strange body language and feet kind of it's bizarre physique and he's, he's skinny <laughs> fat. The one with them. Go great balls of fire that they met at that premiere and basically didn't talk or doing, didn't do anything. And then magically the day after Winona's 18th birthday, they start going out. I'll check that out, Brendan. I, I know that show you're oh, talking such about. such a bunch of crap. 
Oh my God. I mean, just magically the nation basically didn't talk or doing, didn't do anything. And then magically the day after Winona's 18th birthday, they start going out. That's such a bunch of crap. <laughs> I mean, just magically the day she turns 18. Now it's gotten out there that they were an item when she was 17 because it's a leaked, uh, exchange with Winona Ryder's father mm-hmm. said he forbade her from marrying him at 17. And I don't know what the age of consent, if you're dealing with Minnesota or California, but the age of consent in California is, is it 18 or 17? I don't ask, know. Probably ask Anthony Cumia. Probably. He, he doesn't care. <laughs> he knows um, Arkansas. That's why he moved to South Carolina. Mm. Um, good. If both parties, Winona and Depp, are both confirming nothing happened until she was 18, who is he to say that's a bunch of crap? Who is he to say that? How does he know? I don't know. See, again, I don't know who his sources are um, in and around that time, but it's uh, it's the father kind of confirmed that that they, they magically are an item when she turns 18. That's, that's an odd thing. Now, again, it's sort of creepy. I, I guess it's fairly legal or barely legal, mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, it's their, their, their timelines pretty murky too. And I think he gets a little bit, he goes lower. I think he's about to tell you the age. What the age okay. actually was. I'm not okay. sure, though. I can't remember either. It's been a while since I... I didn't realize how... Sele- he. I mean, he runs the whole timeline. And when I first listened to this, I, I didn't realize that he, it's pretty thorough. Mm-hmm. And Andrea is writing for the uh, Gunga Din writes. A- Andrea Zuckerman is also writing for the AARP while in high school. <laughs> uh, Crazy Robin's going to make a Jesse joke right after this. This bought the book. Crazy Robin bought the book. Friday Night NBA is pretty good theory arm i think you might be right that's why i avoided it too josh foster says that i think so too josh i feel like it was on P- twin peaks we're talking about it was on friday night and it clashed with my precious tbs nba what a coincidence TNT. that is huh um the thing is though that timeline is for crap so here's how it really worked when she was 14 she did the movie lucas and yep, Boston mob um, filming in uh, Lucas. Yep. She was introduced to to Johnny, Whitey. and I think. Hey Gunga Jim, would you like to sit in on our Whitey Bulger uh, Black Mass watch along someday? If you know the Boston mob so well, I think you're perfect for that. Please think about it. But I can't. I can't remember. I think she was introduced to him by Courtney Thorn Smith because I think that they oh, were wow. hooking up. Melrose Place. It always goes back to Melrose Place in 90210, doesn't it? Sarah? Come on, I'm getting into it. Come on. <laughs> it wasn't like by Charlie Sheen or anything like that. I want to say it was Courtney Thorne Smith that introduced them. Sarah, can you Google? It was Courtney definitely Thorne an Smith actress, and, and I want to say it was her because she had been been hooking up with Johnny. If there's any pictures of them, um, or apparently took a took a ride on the Johnny Depp rodeo. Summer yeah, school. Johnny would have been. I mean, he wasn't outrageously older than her, but it still was weird. I mean, he's, it's 22, I think, at that time, maybe 23. He's 40 years like older 14. than 14. So, I mean, it's creepy, um, which is why I see why they wanted to wait. Although when – because I guess a 26 or 27-year-old with a – Okay, he's accusing Depp of having been with Winona Ryder at 14 is what he's saying here. It's even worse. He's saying he knew her through Courtney Thorne Smith when he was only 22 and Winona Ryder was 14. That's what he's accusing her of. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. When would that have happened? I, I don't think know. she was still in Minnesota. Oh my, I, let's, as he go, let's go. With an 18-year-old sounds better. I mean, that's not – it's just when it's lowered to the 22 and the 14, even though it's the same age spread, it just – it sounds really bad. Sarah, did you have Elizabeth Taylor perfume collections like Crazy Robin did? Yes, I had white diamonds, and I also had, I forget what the black one was called, but it was in a black bottle. They're not bad. Of course, David knows who Larry Fortensky is. They met in rehab. I should know. I was having my stomach pump next to Liza. <laughs> was that like a... That Never mind. I had visions of Rod Stewart, and I shouldn't <laughs> have those visions. <laughs> 
you know, and the whole dating a 14 year old thing. It, it doesn't really, it doesn't make for a good story. I mean, look at Drake and Millie Bobby Brown. Um, Whoa. I guess when I say she was just method acting because then if you, Millie Bobby Brown and Drake? I don't know. Then if you go by the real timeline rather than the, the artificially inflated timeline, then you get Winona making this movie about Jerry Lee Lewis marrying his 13 year old cousin while a 14 or probably when she's making the great balls of fire, she's probably about 15 or no, she's older than that. She's probably 16. Now in all fairness, Depp is friends with a lot of these, you know, Polanski and Marilyn Manson and on and on and on in these names. And it doesn't and mean he's Steven like Tyler. Them. It doesn't mean he's like them, but he hangs in those circles. He knows full well the accusations that are levied on these people. And it doesn't mean he's like them, but it, it doesn't, it's not a good look. It's not good optics when you're trying to defend shit like this. Uh, Leonardo is gay and a major alcoholic, says Crazy Robin. I believe Crazy Robin. Um, but then, you know, it can be like method acting. Oh, I'm dating. So if she was 16, <laughs> John- then Johnny would have been about. John Paul. 24 Brandon. then, something like that. I mean, there's this eight or nine year gap, I think. John Golder. So, but they had this kind of relationship. By the time she hit 18, they had already been pretty much together for four years. Now, when I say together, I mean, it's together as a male Chanley painter. You know, you could get away with in that kind of situation. Um, Together, as in not really ever going out in public or being seen in public, except at the Great Balls of Fire premiere. Yeah, Crazy Robin. He would have you believe that Depp is R. Kelly, the way he's framing this, is is really what he's driving at. Pissing on Oliver Stone is a whole different story. And then magically, you know, the day after she turns 18, then they're just everywhere. And that's the problem when you when you construct these artificial timelines is the tabloids say they met at the Great Balls of Fire thing. They didn't talk for whatever, six or seven months until she turned 18. Well, that's crazy, Sarah, because that's, that's exactly like the Amber Heard story, right? With mm-hmm. the rum diary. Oh, we didn't speak until officially I was out with Vanessa. And it's a very similar um, explanation. It's It's eerie how similar that is. And then the day she turned 18, then they never were separated. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. You know, it just, they had already had something established. And then when she turned 18, they were together every day because then they could go out in public and they've been indoors. Yeah. Brandon brings up a good point too. Winona Ryder's always looked young anyway. So when she's 18, you think she's younger. She is, she always had this waifish kind of, younger than her years kind of thing. And he, what he doesn't bring up here, and I don't know if he does later is that we talked about the, uh, Godfather three story, right? When Nona Ryder was originally casted in the, uh, mm-hmm. Sophia Coppola role. And then he was, I remember reading, uh, tons of Depp articles back then. It was like, what a chivalrous partner he was that he was at her bedside when she got sick and she had to bow out of Godfather three. Um, but she's always looked, I, I don't remember. It, it was um, was she supposed to be underage in Godfather Three? I don't. I've never seen the third movie. I don't know if the character was underage. That's what I'm wondering. Um, but, but yeah, Brendan's right. Winona Ryder's always had a, a younger than her years. I mean, she's 51 now, right? I mean, she looks good. I mean, she which, she doesn't look 51, but she doesn't look. 35 she looks maybe on, early early 40s she, yeah she's just she looks good but you broads age really well now i mean i feel like you broads it, fi, 51 is not 51 when i was 16 it's mm-hmm. not there's no way you broads have figured out a way to defy aging better than ever i hate men johnny endures with more than you know one woman and we know like look at winona Ryder at 51 and go look at the your mom at 51 mm-hmm. when you were younger or now. Tell me how similar that is. Mm-hmm. Winona indoors at her house by herself with her parents. So what happens 
when a teenager hooks up with an older guy who's a violent drunk. <laughs> well, wouldn't you know there's a blind item? So definitive, right, Gina? And I don't think it's ever been revealed before. And I debated um, waiting until it's up because it's it's anniversary month in a couple days. So I could put it there. But honestly, it's good enough for Black Friday. Um, but I'm going to go ahead. And- this guy has Black Friday sales for gossip. What the hell are we listening to? God damn it. This guy's, it's so funny. Just the kind of, I, he's, he's saving it. And I should say too, this is the crazy days and nights gossip website. He's an entertainment lawyer who has all of ins and connections in the business and he reports gossip and he doesn't reveal his sources. So he does a story. You're supposed to guess who it is. Like two or three days later, he reveals who the story is about. And this is the guy, NT, who does these stories. There's a lot of Howard stories, too, for you stern faithful in there. You gunkers. Uh, there's a ton- And he got a lot of them right, actually. Mm-hmm. And read it today. And I'm going to yeah, the gay use the names of the Howard, people right? rather than if you go back and look at it, it's from June 23rd, 2017, and it was the big blind that day. So the one at 10, 10 in the morning. And I'm just going to read it with the, um, with the people's names. But if you go back and read it, there's a Mr. M, a Miss L and a Miss C. Yeah. Right. He writes his initials as the, uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and read them now. If, a lot of if you'd like to follow it home alone, yeah. you can press pause. I remember that's how I knew who he the was. The subject of this blind is an actress that I consider A-list. If you're a certain age, then you know who she is and probably would call her A-list too. She's pretty low profile, but I think she probably likes it that way. The reason is because she was once involved in a very notorious situation that brought a lot of attention onto her that she did not want. Most people who can remember went down, what went down think they know the whole story. But the thing is, the accepted narrative, there's that word again, is only a tiny piece of the entire situation. I'll call her actress Winona Ryder. When she was younger, she was considered one of the most intriguing and talented people of her generation. She hung around a group of other very young and dynamic people of similar ages who were really enjoying themselves during those times. Winona eventually entered into a relationship with an uber-famous man who I'll call Johnny Depp. They had appeared to be very serious about one another for quite a while until a very disturbing incident occurred. Winona was collateral damage in that situation in terms of everything that took place. The sad truth is that Winona was actually herself a victim of relationship violence that at times was so severe Uh that she required hospitalization. Even years later, she has serious residual trauma from her past situation that almost no one knows about. This violence escalated after the above-mentioned incident occurred. Winona was also subjected to physical and emotional intimidation to prevent her from talking about things she had seen and witnessed in her situation. She was essentially silenced by threats and kept quiet out of fear for years. Anyway, fast forward to now. Winona's kept her mouth shut for a very long time, but has received extensive treatment for trauma and PTSD-type problems. It's taken a long time to heal, and she's been fortunate that she has had good psychological care and support from her loved ones. Again, virtually no one knows that she has had any of these problems. She's been very good at hiding it. The only people who know the severity of what she had to endure are close family and only a few friends who have been sworn to secrecy. Winona also suffered from some repressed memory issues about what happened to her and only recently has been able to recall all the horrible incidents in detail. Winona has a young female actress friend who recently became became aware of Winona's story. I think. Who do you think that is, sir? I'll give you my theory on who the, this actress is. No, keep going. You have a theory? No, you go. Oh, oh you want me to go? Yeah. Christina Ricci. All right, I'll go with that. It lines up to what the the weirdness those two had. Um, where she was, she was basically team Amber during the fucking Fairfax trial. Mm-hmm. Richie was. So when she talks about Depp, it's not right. Crazy. Right? Everything he does is disparages. He has not one compliment the whole time. Uh, it's crazy. This shit's crazy. I'll call her. Missy. 
No, I'll call yep. her. I got her. She is Natalie Portman. Can't believe I got that right. Uh, Winona confided her story to, to Natalie said, as a cautionary tale Natalie so that Portman. the young actress would be careful. He whispered Natalie Portman? He just said Natalie Portman. I couldn't yeah. even hear him. I couldn't even. You were talking him. over him. Oh, it doesn't matter. You could hear him anywhere. Aware of Winona's story. I'll call her Miss C. I'll call her for who she is, Natalie Portman. Uh, Winona. All right. Now you see how I missed it? You see how he fucking mumble whispered that? How was I supposed to catch that? <laughs> I, I agree with I'm Veda, by the way. I have said this from the beginning. She dated Christian Slater yes. before Johnny Depp. Christian Slater, it has always been rumored that back in those days, in his pump up the volume heyday, ego maniacal Christian Slater was kind of mean. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Now, here's where the Natalie Portman thing doesn't check out, Vita. Natalie Portman did a movie with Lily Rose mm -hmm. not a couple of years ago. So why on earth would you work with his daughter knowing and you're the lead on the movie if this shit went down and you are writing domestic abuse stories about him and Winona Ryder? There's yes. no way in hell Natalie Portman with her career, massively successful career, would ever do a movie, ever, <laughs> to quote Amber Heard, would do a movie with, with Lily Rose. Not mm -hmm. a chance. Knowing the, the off chance he would show up on set, blah, blah, blah. So I think Sarah and Vita nailed it. That's actually Christian Slater. Confided her story to, to Natalie as a cautionary tale so that the young actress would be careful not to get herself into a similar situation. <laughs> Natalie is an outspoken feminist and looks up to yes. Winona as a, as a mother figure, and she's urging Winona to go public with her story. Okay, just for you, Ben4810, with all your great comment, or all your support, because you're such a great commenter. Uh, if this guy happens to say, um, I want you to close your eyes and um, enter into the lush green valley of relaxation, we we are all gone. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Ben. Well, Nona has also gotten to the point in her therapy where she's no longer afraid and is ready, ready to tell all. She's angry about being silenced and her family, friends, and medical team are supportive of her desire to go public. Johnny and the Slayer other better. people involved in the past situation have, of course, gone on with their lives as, as if nothing happened and have no clue that Winona could potentially expose them. If she does decide... It is Diane D. Thank you, Diane. Does everybody know that A.J. Ben... Can I tell my favorite A.J. Ben story real briefly? Well, did he really hook up with her or was it just... He, he, did. he, he was, he was it. trying to latch onto her. He says he she wanted drugs and a mutual friend said oh, A.J. Right. was the guy to get her hooked up with drugs so they met at a hotel room and she hit on him claiming that he looked like depp in donnie <laughs> no <laughs> i'll i will find for the next podcast i promise you guys i will get that audio again he told it to us on radio gunk when we had him on mm -hmm. i that remember the first that time i think i had did I hear him say it once and I, I made him repeat the story or something? I don't. It was so long ago. Yeah. That, that's I was married. I remember when I heard that, I was married. I she remember. Was... Oh, wow. Is it that long ago? I remember going to the bedroom to avoid spending time with him. So I listened to your podcast. I hate men. I hate men. So AJ Benza said that he was the, uh, he was, he had connections to the drug world. And when Nona Ryder was Jones in for, was it cocaine or heroin? Cocaine, right? Probably cocaine. And AJ got it for her, and they met in a hotel room. And then mm -hmm. she hit on him and said he looked like Depp and Donnie Brasco. It's probably just to get um, a good supply <laughs> from her supplier. AJ said that he also um, Pat, he he almost hung out with Depp on the ninth set. Warren Maria loved this. The ninth he was in France for some reason, and the ninth gate he was shooting the ninth gate. And AJ Benza got invited to the set or something. Ninth Gate was also shot in New York. So it could have been that. To go public, there will be added shock value because those who witnessed what was going on and did not intervene will also be called out publicly. It's amazing. I the best part is that Winona also has journals and medical records that document the abuse, which will be undeniable. The story has the potential to be huge and will shine an important light on relationship abuse survivors. Natalie is also this. anxious to help publicize Winona's story and has a lot of power to do so 
because she has a massive following on social media. I hope Winona can remain strong and but it's not on maintain the, media. the courage necessary to come forward. So that one was from 2017. Why can't you pronounce 17 and properly? While all this was going on, while <sighs> he was with Winona, he also hooked up with um, Tracy Lord. And that's true. There was now that's go ahead, Sarah. Tell he me. did sleep with Tracy Lords, yes. As it goes, and she now she mentions it in her book, right? Is that uh yes. It go on the set of Crybaby. Um, this is he's with Winona still, and she, he is in bed with her, and she is supposedly underage. At this I don't, 16 I don't or 17. think she was underage then. She could have been. It's really she's on the fringe of being legal. She was underage in the eighties. No, but she's uh, Crybaby's eighty nine, and if she's, they filmed it in eighty nine, and if she's born in like say seventy three, that's underage. I'm looking. It could be. It could be. And apparently they're in bed together, and then she ran out of the room. But he wasn't like a pig she or was anything. Sixty eight. 1968. Okay, okay, okay. So she's 21. She was 21. 21 during Crybaby. Mm-hmm. He and was I 26. The story's in her book. That uh, time with Julia Lewis. Julia and, Lewis. of course, also the German model he met in a sex club where he was watching a woman having sex with uh, a mechanical dog. It was basically a machine that was... Outfitted costume. Juliet Lewis is something that's not been totally confirmed, and that's obviously what's eating Gilbert Grape um, during the hardest time of his life. So, getting over Winona Ryder had him in a heroin tailspin, translucent um, skin yes, from yes, heroin. Yes, and it has not been totally confirmed that he was ever with Juliet Lewis. I'm still, I have audio of her talking about him, and I can't track. He also, doesn't it's like. They were in a movie together. Did he really sleep with every single female co-star? Is that really believable? It is to a lot of people. Well, obviously this Not guy. Not to you. But... I mean, if you have sent, but I'm saying to a lot of people, they just believe that every male and female co-star slept together in some capacity. Mm. Because your movies are intoxicatingly, you know, they were around it's each other all the time. It's also stuff that gets leaked by... Um, you know, movie companies to romanticize their leads in the movies. It's very easy. It doesn't even mean that it happened. It's, it's like, very, look at, very... look at um, what the Twilight 2 people, Pattinson. Robert Pattinson and Kristen Stewart. She's a lesbian. Did they really date? Or was that just leaked by the production company or the, the um, whoever produced it to sell the movie? It's also it's a lazy gossip too. It's like obvious lazy gossip. Like you just assume that every co-star is it's you know what I mean? Everyone's gonna believe it because oh they're the same. Okay, they hooked up. That's that's believable. Mm-hmm. They're around each other, you can't prove they didn't. It's the laziest angle to take gossip is that yeah. the two leads hooked up on a well look at all the way back to Rock Hudson being uh <laughs> you know linked to his co-stars, please. David worked with Rock Hudson. David knows everything about Rock Hudson. David was Rock Hudson's first boyfriend. <laughs> who who was who he married to? Uh, it was some normal person. Yeah, David stole Rock Hudson from this bra. <laughs> Dressed up. Whatever. To, to look like a dog. Actually, to look like a German Shepherd, specifically. So... I mean, this is not a, a good situation. In the tabloids, though, they I, tried I, to make... I, I couldn't hear the, it, David, I swear. The Winona-Johnny split way more noble than it was. But I will say this. Natalie Portman was in uh, Black Swan with Winona Ryder, who um, Darren Aronofsky has this thing where he resuscitates careers. You know, he's does like kind of like like loser people on the downside of... The, 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 I'm talking about the script, like the, the the screenplay is about like Jake the Snake Roberts and the wrestler, and he's at the end of his career. And the Black Swan, Winona Ryder's a washed up ballet dancer, and it's always 
there's a Patton Oswald movie called Big Fan about a sports radio caller who stalks a giant a Plexico Burris, I think. And it's just a lot of that. Like it's a lot of just lo- people who are like losers. I hate to use the L word, but in, in his definition. And he has a tendency to cast actors like we just said with that Brendan Fraser we th- thing we did on Gunk, who are on the who are on the the downside of their career and resuscitate them, much like Tarantino did. So that's mm-hmm. what he kind of did for Winona Ryder, and she knows her from Black Swan. Natalie Portman. You know, I think they said something. Oh, she's just too young to to get married. She can't have to be married at nineteen. That's far <laughs> too young. John Hine, Crazy Robin. That's funny. You know, I mean, this was a guy who had all kinds of substance abuse issues, who got violent, you know, and he definitely met his counterpart in Kate Moss. I mean, if you're talking about mirror images of one another, goodness gracious. But before we get to to Johnny and Kate, though, um, I want to explore something that's been bubbling under the surface for a long time. And today we're going to bring it to the surface. J.I. Young, welcome, sir. Christian Slater's forehead is registered as a lethal weapon, so it could be him behind all this. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's he really is ground zero for Hollywood hair plugs. You know that whole McConaughey and Vince Vince Vaughn and Nicolas Cage and all those mysterious heads of hair that are thicker in their fifties than they were in their twenties. Surface and expose it to the world. It's always been it's always been there, just under, but it's never. And really just $12 plastic mm, here's the here's what happened <laughs> and even if there's parts of it that you might have problems with. aj benza did say that about already a crazy rob that's exactly the same story so aj's like the big drug connection for everybody from winona Ryder to Artie lang david goes aj help with the stuff a 12 dollar pair of plastic sunglasses from macy's in her bra that she could walk out with uh <laughs> tying in the shoplifting well done with or you accept a certain version of events that's fine i don't have problems with you you know with that you choose to believe what you do i choose to believe what i believe is right but the underlying part no matter what if you choose your version or my version is that Johnny was still an asshole. Um, <laughs> God, he's just angry. Do you suppose yes, the, that the, 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 the an softer addict it is, the angrier it is to who was controlling of his teen girlfriend an and kept her in line through violence and intimidation That's right, might also dude. be crazy jealous? It seems to me that might work. That might fit. He does... There is a jealousy thing with I him, mean, which... Look at all the... The women are shot every year. Some guy's jealous and controlling, even though he can sleep with anybody. You know, he can watch the mechanical dogs have sex with a woman at a sex club. Well, <sighs> he gets orally serviced by a model. But if the girlfriend makes even one comment about an actor she says is talented or nice, that that might fly off the now He's talking about, without bringing her name up, he's talking about Amber Heard and all the jealousy things that came up through. Mm-hmm. Uh from James Franco to um, Channing Tatum to DiCaprio to even fucking Billy Bob Thornton. No, maybe. Do you think maybe? Because Amber Heard had her connections, right? Her internet connections on this campaign against him. I was thinking the same thing. And this was during the time when all of this stuff was coming out. So he was deemed a monster in the media, right? Yes. Do you think this is... She just made friends with somebody from this website. And well, this how did she get the TMZ so video? Angry. That's kind of exactly, like TMZ. Right? Exactly. It yep. could very well be. You don't know who she knew at that time behind the scenes. A lot of weird conduits. To, also, to think about like the, the, the Daily Mail and all the gossip mm-hmm. sites that had her back back then. The Post. This could be him just going nuts on an embellishment. Some of the stuff is true, though. Some of the, some of the facts he does have right. He does. It's not all wrong. But just not, I don't I don't understand his anger, but now I I'm thinking I maybe I do understand his anger I I don't know. Black Swan is good, Crazy Robin it is if you like that genre of it's uh, very good. Aronofsky is a great bunch of movies. The Wrestler was great. I love The Wrestler. It's about Jake the Snake Roberts at the end of his career, mm-hmm. and that when that you know when the WWF stuff dries up and J. O. Young they should have said Johnny and the and the mom were banging if they wanted publicity for Gilbert Grape. That's <laughs> 
Oh God, did you imagine that. Mary Steenburgen is uh I wonder if they had anything going on. Ted Danson was. Because she plays the the woman he's cheating with. Mm -hmm. Gilbert's cheating with. <laughs> on uh the she's married to Mary Steenburgen's married to Ted Carver, the um insurance salesman that he tries to get life insurance, uh, family life insurance from. Okay. When he's worried about the, remember when he's in the I've in only the seen with clips him? of this movie. Oh, you never saw Gilbert Grape. There, I can't emotionally watch that movie. Oh, you, it'll, it's rough. It's the saddest scene I've ever seen in a motion picture to this day is when they burn the house down with, um, I know, but I can't watch Leonardo mom. DiCaprio. No, it's probably the best thing he's ever done. It, it hits close to home. I okay. can't watch that role. I get it. Handle and do something outrageous. Just because somebody is a celebrity or an actor, or somebody you see on TV, or somebody you see in the movies, or somebody you see on the cover of your of tabloids at the supermarket checkout stand, doesn't make them any different. Like, that that's not your whole industry. You, you represent nothing but Hollywood people. Mm -hmm. You're the biggest star fucker of all, Andy. Exactly. What are you talking about? You're not a regular guy. Listen to that pretentious, affected speech you have. You're the opposite of a regular guy. G. <laughs> Canada is a regular guy. We know that's, that's not true. David, getting dinner with my manager now. Ooh la la. Can I grill her about not getting me on the vampires? I still love you. I love you too, David. Imagine nice it's brag. Tracy Jacobs. <laughs> He's never told us. He should approach Tracy. Undercover David's the best David. Like he gets Tracy Jacobs as his manager to this day. He gets her to come on this show. <laughs> Boy, we got to, what we got to do with her. Does she have another transcript in the, um, the uh, lost, the, um, what is it? The, uh, the, the 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 Andrea Burkhardt uh, excavation the the mm, I don't know unreleased documents I don't know Un I only read bullet documents. points on that whole thing I have I don't a theory know. it's so much it's like two thousand pages there has to be a Tracy Jacobs testimony in there that we haven't seen mm -hmm. that's something to read yeah I because think when it was reported on what came out I think the main focus was on his um, ED his dysfunction yes erectile dysfunction okay thank you and <laughs> i'm trying to be adult here. i don't think everybody knows that acronym I, I can't you can't assume that everybody's obsessed with penile acronyms like you are well hey i mean whatever but uh i think that that was the focus and nobody really you know the layman's really weren't understanding who tracy jacobs was no. other than her five minute uh Video testimony. And our six-part transcript read. I know. <laughs> but you played a brilliant Tracy Jacobs I, I know. had during that. Thanks. I know. If you – now, knowing what she sounds like now, would you change your voice at all? I'd have to her? watch it again. I'd, I'd, just, I'd, just very nasally. Just very nasally. Well, I, you should have gotten to me like two months uh, – two days ago, I would have been more nasally. I could have reenacted it. Better. The only audio footage of her is from the biography from Bravo when they were promoting yep. – uh, I think it was either Secret Window or Finding Neverland or Pirates One. Mm -hmm. It came around right around that, that time, like 03, 04. But that's the only speaking audio I ever had of her. Mm -hmm. Almost like Epstein. You can't find anything on him. <laughs> then any of the other jerk guys, they go around and kill their girlfriend or ex-girlfriend or whatever because they dump them <laughs> or because they... You know, said something or wanted to be with somebody else or whatever reason. J.I. Young, are you kidding me? American Dad did a Gilbert Grape parody? Are you kidding me? I didn't know that. Huh. Yeah, that's one of the Deppy Award categories we're going to have is best Depp animated voice um, in a cameo appearance. So it's like Family Guy, SpongeBob SquarePants. King of the Hill, and I don't know. Did did he do something on American Dad too, or are they just making fun of it? Um, That's a Debbie category. I have to horrible. remember where those animated uh, stills I found of him are from. With, I don't. I don't remember. With squirrels. G. Can well, Sarah, I had to fix my misreading acronym today. Thanks. <laughs> G. Canada's all over it. Big no, he's thanking me because I helped him out today. Oh yeah, right, right. He always did. <laughs> G Canada goes, David, big shouting about having a manager. Is that the same manager stuttering John just fired? He's such a dick. He's such a dick. He's Dante. such a ball buster. I, I shouldn't know. 
<laughs> Dante, oh, Dante, don't, Dante, don't do contracts. <laughs> I'm quoting. Who am, I, who am I, Dante Bruchette over here in the Rockies <laughs> outfield? I only do Combine one that with some, Okay, I'm done. Keep going. Some some substance abuse issues, and you got you got a mess. So, do you suppose that if Winona said something nice about River Phoenix, <laughs> Josh Foster always at the the Dennis Miller, that Johnny always, might be the one responsible <laughs> for that heroin? Former angel. <laughs> That River had never tried before. Oh my God! Oh Jesus, this buddy! This guy about everyone. River Phoenix else or other jerk guys. They go around and killing their girlfriend or ex girlfriend or whatever because they dumped them or because what? they, you know, said something or wanted to be with somebody else or whatever reason. So they kill them. You combine that with some. Some some substance abuse issues, and you got you got a mess. <laughs> so, do you suppose that if Winona said something nice about River Phoenix, that Johnny might be the one responsible? Oh God! For that heroin <laughs> that River had never tried before. What a- that is such a lie. And then blame the wasted on drugs band member who's an addict. Frusciante. Who can't remember anything. Red Hot Chili Peppers, John Frusciante he's talking about. Anything basically were... about that night? Go ahead, Sarah. I'm sorry. They were friends. River Phoenix and Depp were f- good friends. They weren't good friends. They yes, were they... acquaintances at the Viper. Well, whatever. Okay. But they were friendly. Let's say friendly. I'll go, I'll meet you in the middle there. Thank you, Sloan. But if Winona Ryder gives River Phoenix a compliment, Depp purposely overdoses him on heroin. <laughs> it's such a crazy jump, but I will say this. Did you know that River Phoenix is actually offered? So this is the, I don't know if he's going there. The other accusation he might go to is that he had him killed through by, by foisting heroin on him in his circles that so he could get the role in what's eating Gilbert grape, which is originally offered to River Phoenix. Oh my God. I've heard that too. I've heard that one. Which is crazy. Because he was basically functionally incoherent and incapacitated, even though he was supposed to play. Do you think that's possible? That's the Hollywood. Do you think it's possible Hollywood that Viper. the reason this person from the band didn't make it to the funeral was not because he wanted to kill himself. It's because Johnny didn't want him to go to the funeral and stayed with him at the guy's house. To make sure he didn't go to the funeral and make sure he didn't start telling some story that Johnny didn't want him to tell. Johnny gave him the version of events that have become kind of accepted. What's the story, Sarah? After the after the he goes River Phoenix is pronounced dead. He goes to the hospital with the Joaquin Phoenix thing on the sidewalk. The story goes that Depp had a meeting at his house with Frushante and a bunch of managers and people to say, how do we handle this? Mm-hmm. How do we spin this? How do we? That's the rumor that happened after this. That he had this. How, how do we exonerate ourselves from culpability here? It's just like right as Phoenix is uh, at the you know he, being shuttled to the hospital, be pronounced dead. Mm-hmm. I yeah, I don't know the details about the meeting. I don't know if it's just a theory some weirdo thought up, or or if it came from this website. I don't know. G. Canada thinks he has a kitty diddler voice. Kitty <laughs> fiddler voice. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna I found something here. On the set, River Phoenix. Oh, River Phoenix did a movie with Dan Aykroyd, apparently. I don't know what movie, sorry. Doesn't say it here. Oh yeah, I remember that. Okay. Um, sneakers, sneakers, sneakers. Oh um, okay. Robert uh, Redford. Dan Aykroyd apparently warned River Phoenix about his heroin addiction at the time. So this is not Depp did not introduce River Phoenix that night to heroin that he had never done before. Please. Well, good catch, Sarah, because I think that predates the Viper Room. Um, but you know who? You know why Ackroyd's brought up, right? Hmm. Belushi. Yeah, of course. Right. So that's the, he knows somehow Ackroyd's an expert on drugs because Belushi was, you know. Amazing. I just realized I've said "of course" about twenty-five times. I tonight. love your "of course." Belushi is <laughs> Belushi is actually friends with uh, Thompson. 
Yes. Hunter S. Thompson, I don't know how I know this. I forget how I know this. Um, used to go to Saturday Night Live when the original cast was doing it. And he, would hung, he hung out with Belushi and those guys back in the day. And then Bill Murray goes on to play Thompson and wear the Buffalo robe. I know Saturday Night Live mostly sucks now, blah, blah, blah. But at least it's it's on. My dream is that Depp hosts that show before it's all over. I, I just, I can't stop. He would kill on that show. He's such a brilliant chameleon mimic. You hear that, Holly Pop? That he would put that show on his shoulders and dominate and would be the best episode that show's had in years. I mean, he, he you wouldn't have to write, you could give him anything. I mean, he played Trump in a Saturday Night Live Funny or Die movie. So there's the connections there. I just don't know why it hasn't happened. I, I just, I feel like it's going to happen. I feel like in the next year or two. But him at 60, right? Hosting that show. <laughs> and, n- and number one jerk thing. Ugh. Besides what I believe killing River Phoenix. That's right, crazy. River. Um so the night he does this, he also invites Joaquin, who's underage, to come to the Viper Room. Now Joaquin's a good three years younger than River or something, four years younger. I'm I th- not sure. He I think he was underage. Yeah, Crazy Robin goes, well, yeah, it's important. They did a meet. They have a meeting, of course. It's his club, and it's someone dead out in front of it. Maybe that, that may warrant a meeting. That's exactly right, Crazy Robin. Is this guy reading from his diary? What's his beef with that? It sounds like fan fiction, says J.I. Young. It is. Cr- Some of the stuff is true, J.I. Young. Like I, we're, I think we're doing a decent job here of acknowledging the things that are we've heard and have some facts to it. And I'm showing you the receipts. Some of this is ridiculous. He's got some crazy acts to grind with him though. It's that's so funny though. Fanfic diary. Um, Lonely Island, crazy Robin. Um, Did you ever hear the Jack Sparrow song they did? They did a Michael Bolton sings on it. There's a video. There's a Pirates of the Caribbean parody that, um, Lonely Island, the parody group from Saturday Night Live, Andy Samberg, and it's uh, it, they did they do a Pirates of the Caribbean parody. It's really good, and Michael <laughs> Bolton sings on it. Eddie Murphy, SNL couldn't make Eddie Murphy funny. He'd be a waste of Johnny's time. I don't know, David. I'd like to see it. I think you'd be impressed. Johnny Depp is the uh, Holly Pop. Listen to this. Oh God, stop! Is the only enough one, that. <laughs> really the enough only one that. who um does a Don Rickles impression. That I've ever seen. No one's ever attempted a good Don Rickles impression. And Depp does a great Don Rickles impression. As he did on Kimmel. And I think when the Don Rickles tribute on Spike TV. He should have done an impression the whole time. Instead of what he did. If I were writing it. That's what he would have done. And Joaquin's the one who. uh, Makes the 911 phone call. I mean that's. That's messed up. And everybody has always accepted the. Yep, that's true, Crazy Robin. Go, go, just Idiot. scour the internet, look, and just basically, if you find this story about Johnny skipping River's funeral, and you find the Carrie. story about what's it, John, my mind's going blank. Do we have any intel on River Phoenix's funeral, Sarah? Do you know? Has that ever been talked about? No, but I... Th- oh, gosh. I never thought about that. I think he had, like, a hippie-type funeral. That could very well be, like, at a commune or something like that? Yeah. That could very well be. I never, I, I'd like to look into that for next time. If we could find that intel on his... If there's anything on it. Because I don't remember... I mean, again, this is, like, 1990. Three October of ninety three, and it just isn't the media that there is now. Nowadays, you'd probably have footage of it. There would be video, yeah. Andy Murphy is one of the funniest guys on the planet. Thirty five years ago, but before he went commercial, to, he still is funny. G Canada, if you catch him, like when he really is in the zone, he obviously still has those chops. I mean, sometimes I've I've laughed at some stuff he's done recently. He's a brilliant, I've... brilliant guy. 
I forgot when you Google River Phoenix funeral, a photo of him in the coffin comes up. Are you kidding me? Nope. Mm. Can you send me that? I will if you're really interested. It's not pleasant. Red hot chili pepper. Anyway, the other guy. <laughs> the... John Frusciante he's talking about. Depp's yeah. also friends with Flea. Flea was in the band Depp had with Gibby Haynes from the Butthole Surfers P. So there's some weird connection with him and the band guy. Um, not being at the funeral. Every single story will say that Johnny missed it because he was walking this guy off a suicide ledge, basically. That the guy wanted to commit suicide. But Johnny, our noble hero, goes over to his house and talks him down from it. Our noble hero who shows, you know, basically no regard for anybody unless it serves his purpose. Wow. So we're to believe that he skipped the funeral to go talk this guy down. And I guarantee you, every single tablet got that line or two lines and that's been just put into the official version. Because the band guy is the one who supposedly gave River the heroin to snort. By all accounts, he did. Because River thought it was cocaine. According to that guy, the, the Dr. Drew, um, uh, what the celebrity rehab, the dude, what was his name again? Sarah Forrest? Yeah, Bob he's, Forrest. Bob Forrest, yeah. that's it. He's apparently like some sort of intrepid musician. And if you watch Celebrity Rehab, I used to go like this. I'd stop and I'd go, is he trying to look like Depp? He wears the glasses and he has the fucking derby on and the hair. <laughs> and I used to think he was trying to look like Depp. And apparently he's a Viper Room staple who mm -hmm. talks about Frusciante giving heroin speedball to uh, River Phoenix. Now that's who told Depp that Phoenix had died. Remember, Depp called checking on him. Yeah, and he told him he, uh, Phoenix had died, and Depp was flabbergasted. And the, the that creepy, that really, really scary, sad call of uh, Joaquin Phoenix on the sidewalk. Yeah, with the asshole nine one one operator. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. And the guy gave him too much because the band member is just a horrible drug addict. There's one problem with that story. <laughs> that voice, that fucking vocal Johnny fry. Johnny had River dragged out to the sidewalk oh, no. so River wouldn't die in the club. That's not true. Because we couldn't have anything bad. Deb was on stage. About the club in the papers or in the press. Well, the other story with Deb being on stage and Sarah's right is that River Phoenix was so... <sighs> Bitter that he that he claims that Depp bumped him his band from getting on. So Depp and his band, I think it was P at the time, mm -hmm. yeah. jumped on stage to perform and bumped River Phoenix, who brought his guitar to the Viper Room with him. And River Phoenix was so distraught he couldn't perform in that slot that he took a speedball to get over. Yeah, that's everyone's fault, but River Phoenix's fault, you know. <laughs> but his friends, I've watched you know, documentaries on River Phoenix's last final 24 hours and everything wrong with the Viper Room videos, you know, every, by every account, his friends took him out because he was acting weird. So they took him outside, either they were leaving or they just wanted to get him to get some air and he started convulsing on the ground. And how much speedball tolerance could you possibly have at that age? I don't that you know did anything so about much it. drugs that you're actually, a you know, you're used to taking a speedball. Who knows what the fuck that does? Right, G Canada? I mean, nobody knows speedball effects more than I do. <laughs> and uh, I still haven't mastered it. I mean, I, don't, I know the drug culture better than anyone. And speedball is even hardcore for me. Because this is one thing that will get the press. If you have um, an actor overdose in your nightclub, the name of that nightclub is going to be in it. And people will okay, want to go awesome. in the nightclub and see where it happened. Okay, so you're telling me he wanted River Phoenix to die, but he gave mouth to mouth to Courtney Love at the Viper Room when she was overdosing. Yeah. Who he barely has any affiliation with. What she confirms. Yeah. All the time. I mean, not that she, her credibility is the greatest, but she confirms it. Uh, say what you will. What, is that true, Crazy Robin? So I just Raphael with River Phoenix on? Talk about him. I think I remember that. I didn't know that. It's a very weird episode, I think. It is weird. 
Um, uh, drive, yeah, Robin has seen people overdose in a bar, and the owner has them dragged out so they won't die inside. First-hand knowledge. G Canada. <laughs> yeah, J.I. Young. Have, has Joaquin ever spoken about this? I don't know. He's such I don't a think he really guy. talks about that night at all. He's such a weird guy as it is. I can't imagine him articulate. That's something to look for, too, if he's ever spoken about this. That's a great question, Jay. I've not heard Joaquin comment on this ever. We'll, we'll wrap I don't up. understand okay. why he thought that if you dragged him out in front of the club that people wouldn't say... Oh, he died in front of the Viper Room. So the name of the club is still in there. But that's missing the whole point. First of all, again, no matter what version you believe, the fact that he did that just shows what an a-hole he is and what a jerk he is <laughs> for doing that. Okay? That, that's, that's bottom line. That'll show you. Oh, is that the bottom He'd rather line? have him die out on the middle of Sunset Boulevard <laughs> on the sidewalk... You know, I don't know if you've ever been to the Viper Room. I mean, it's not a very wide sidewalk. It's wider than most sidewalks. It's not like a, you know, just what you would think of as a sidewalk. It's wider. But it's, you know, at night like that. I mean, with dust, put him on the sidewalk in front of all the other people that are walking down the street and let them watch him die. Now, the thing is... You would only put him out there to die if you knew he was going to die. How did Johnny know he was going to die? Oh, my God. How did Johnny know that River Phoenix would not be able to recover from this? Now he's a coroner. Yeah. And, a psychic, and he has algorithm, he has, uh, biorhythms memorized oh. of River Phoenix. This is crazy. Crazy Robin goes, Joaquin Phoenix opens up about the death of his river, who died 27 years ago. Uh, watch uploaded just okay so it is out there somewhere okay this is from three years ago thank you crazy robin i'm going to watch that for next time when we do this uh we're going to wrap up really soon give this like a couple more seconds are we going to finish this part though yeah okay no we did better the band member tell him exactly how much river had done no johnny knew because johnny's the one who gave it to him do you know that what the 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 way that he that he took the amount that was like three times the the lethal amount for heroin three times and I think it's something like uh, I'm gonna forget eight times maybe the the level of a lethal dose of coke but let's just stick with the heroin it was three times and Johnny knew that River had been clean for about six weeks no, how true. would he know that's River was not making true. a movie God sir. He, that is so not true. I'll stop it here. Up until the day he died, the night he died, he was doing heroin. He was sent home early from a movie, the movie he was working on, because he couldn't recite his lines. Right. In addition, Depp is not good enough friends with River Phoenix to know any of his drug history. They're not good friends. They're not I don't that have close. Any, I don't have any doubt that maybe a bouncer saw this commotion going on and said, you know, guys, go. Head outside. Why is he? I don't picture Depp in the back with like a beaker, you know, measuring heroin and cocaine <laughs> for a speedball, and you know, walking up to River Phoenix, taking his his pulse just to know how long it's going to take to kill him. Wait a minute, wasn't it? Wasn't it also Kate Moss's birthday around the same time? Know. Didn't they have a, a party for her at this exact time? I don't mean probably. I mean, he's got his hands full, like Sarah's saying. Like, he's suddenly like Walter White measuring crystal meth in New Mexico at the side. This is crazy shit. Now, this, but the, I am convinced now I am correct with my theory that, that he's just probably was bought off by the herd camp. I think so, too. To do well, this. This I is mean, so over the top. I haven't listened to this in five so years. Mel- I mean, it's, he's so melodramatic, too. But at the same time, you know, you could be – if anyone could be sued for defamation, it yes, would be Yes, that's him. what I was thinking too. I mean this is crazy. You can't say worse stuff about someone. This is defamation 101 if this is all false. Now I understand that Anthony Fox video we did where we were getting really weird comments. 
I understand where that was coming from now. Because this yep. podcast is pretty popular. But how about, I'm sure um, people believe every word of this. Well, also, too, our buddy Richie Albertini is involved. And I think that he was the one who told, was it, uh, what was the other, Lipstick Alley or something? You remember that story oh, no. we read about Anthony Fox and Sal Janko and stuff? And that had to come from someone who worked at the Viper Room. Remember yeah. he said, I used to work at the Viper Room. I feel like that could have been Richie Albertini. Mm -hmm. I lived in an animal house when I was younger. Yep, a couple of o ODs. They welcome Dorian Morgan as you come in in the last sec with a buzzer beater. Um, yep, sounds like a good theory from Sarah. This man has called Johnny everything under the sun. She was hiring private detectives to go back and look into this Viper Room stuff back in the 90s before the defamation trial. Yep. And they didn't find anything. Uncover. You talk about um, Barisi? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sure she hired more. But Paul there's Barisi. a reason we never heard anything definitive about it from her side. Yeah. They didn't find a, anything. Paul Barisi initially was hired by Amber Heard. And he turned on her because I think she stiffed him. Yeah. Well, he went back to her and said he didn't find anything. And she reamed him out and fired him. She fired him and didn't never paid him. Yep. And so he's like. Hell hath no fury as a Barisi scorned. And then he went on a rampage on he, the guys on Twitter all the time. He's a fixer, like a la, um, mm -hmm. what's the show on Showtime again with uh, Lee Abe Schreiber? Uh, no, I Donovan. Don't. Yeah, Don, whatever. Um, he's a Hollywood fixer and he um, he just eviscerates Amber Heard all day on and and posts. He, I mean, this guy really had some deep stuff. He went to Kentucky to find Depp's father's work history. When I he know, was a, a city planner in Owensboro, it was crazy though. That I can't believe he went that. How he, well, he announced. I remember if I remember correctly, he announced on Twitter he had scathing documents about Depp's family, and that's what he said. Yeah. Depp's dad's work history. Who cares? Defamation, exactly. G Canada. I'm not wanna, responsible for my father's work history. Who cares? I want to thank everyone tonight for joining us on this. Sarah, thank you for your salacious, beautiful gossip and your. <laughs> Um, you are Sariana Huffington, um, Liz Cheney, uh, Natalie Maines, beautiful pipes that everybody loves so much. And give us a plug for the Patreon, Sarah. It is www.patreon.com slash wino forever. Please join us over there for the low, low price of $2. You will be charged the beginning of the month. So you won't even notice it coming out of your bank account. And we put probably... $25 worth of effort into that every week and you'll only pay $2. But if you can't do that, uh, support us here. If you can't do that, just hit the like button. Jump street and 90210 watch along so far. It's not just all we're doing, but that's so that's what we're doing right now. And I will put a lot of stern red meat of videos that are somewhat obscure and that YouTube will not allow. Uh, the next one I'm thinking about putting up is Gary against Richie Wilson. Okay. Remember that fight? When Richie Wilson uh, exposes Gary. There have been uh, so I many. I... Th yeah, I think people have heard <laughs> the audio. There's a great video I have on that. Um, any any requests I'll take, too. I'm fine with that. Uh, Thanks, I'm not Kylo. Above... Yes, thank you, Kylo. Thank you, sir. Thank you for everything. I'm driving. I can't comment, but I did pull over. Thank you, Kylo. You didn't have to pull over. You could do it any time. For Christ's well, sake. No, no, no. Don't time. tweet or don't comment while you're driving. Thank you. Thank you. We for love you, over. too, Crazy Robin. We love you, too. We hope you sit in with us on the City of Lies watch along. I'm very much looking forward to redeeming myself on that. Um, so yeah, so the Patreon, the next, uh, the night, did you the nine two one zero basketball episode? We're gonna record that this weekend probably, and, uh, uh, maybe or early next week. I'm gonna record this last episode. And David, I need you for the mother daughter fashion show episode of nine two one zero. If you're available. If not, I'll figure it out. So this is Arm for Sarah and Jefferson Starship saying, no and time. And Camilla. And that crazy cartoon <laughs> cat, Camilla. No time. And, of course, for uh, Holly Pop saying, no time is a... Moo! 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 Oh, goodbyes. Whoops.
<laughs> that was a funny. Was a, that by the way, that was Jack Depp. I wanted to show you. Uh, oh yeah, you wanted to do that. The yoga hoses. So if you're wondering who that is, that is Johnny Depp's son, Jack, only acting role in yoga hosers, as he is breaking his own sister's balls working at a convenience store in Kevin Smith's yoga hosers. The entire Depp family is in the movie. you are. For the first time, I choose to walk out on you. Jump.